Ladies and gentlemen and gamers of all ages, welcome to your cat commentary team for what I think is going to be one of the best races this round of the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee tournament. Uh, I'm joined here today by fellow cats Iron and Razor. How are you guys doing today? Meow. Doing good. Meow in perfect fashion. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, yeah. how are we guys feeling about this uh, about this run here today that we're going to be getting into? Yeah, it's it's going to be a really interesting race. Um, we have um, Headstrong and Etiquette were both had five points coming into this round, and then we had Sandy. Who unfortunately, got paired up with them uh, with four points. However, unfortunately, Sandy's really a lot. It's a rematch from last year. It's fortunate. Okay. This okay. is going to be fantastic. It is a rematch. That's true. But I was going to say. But regardless, Sandy has got improved a lot, and I'm sure they'll have a really good race regardless. So it should be a very, very good race, a very close race. Oh, I imagine. All three racers oh, are phenomenal. I, I definitely, yeah, definitely. I'm very, very excited for this race. The, last year, we, this was a round two race for us last year, and uh, it was one I believe Sandy got a PB at the end of the race, mm -hmm. and Caroline. In Victory Road was a deciding factor between Etiquette and Headstrong. Uh, Etiquette actually had some technical issues halfway through, so we lost like a good third of his race just because he lost power. But uh, I've already talked to him. He said he's good weather-wise. Shouldn't have any of those issues this year. So I'm I'm really looking forward to to seeing what these these three are going to put us through today. Yep, we have. Um... Sandy on e on Pika and the other two runners headstrong and etiquette on Eevee. We got a good representation from both games. Looks like we have a Definitely. male Pika for Sandy. I don't know. I can't tell the Eevees. But... Uh, looks like a female for Etta and a male. Like oh both. no, female for headstrong. Female for both. All right. How do you even Not... tell the females on the Eevees? The tail, the tail has a heart. The tail has little hearts. It's a little harder to tell than the Pikachu. I don't even pay attention. I just go. <laughs> That's all right. We're going to be coming up here on our uh, our first hard decision of the run. Um, looks like etiquette's a little bit of a delay. Um, yeah, etiquette's <laughs> definitely a bit of a delay so, here. So we're we're looking at about an eight second delay for etiquette. Just you know, keep that in mind as we go through the race here. Um, heads, uh, we're coming up on the first decision of the run, whether they're going to pick boy or girl trainer. I don't know about you guys. I'm usually girl number one train or racer outside of AOP. Then it's always girl number three. Girl three got it. Okay, two girl, girl one, one two from one. both Edda and Headstrong. And now we're just kind of going through all the the opening sequences. What what do you guys uh, what are you guys' predictions for uh, for this race as we uh, dive into this here? My bold prediction: all three finish within a minute of each other. All right. What about you, Iron? Uh, I think they will all get runnable starters. <laughs> Ooh, all three That's runnable a bold starters. One. <laughs> that is a bold one. <laughs> Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's about a 50% chance of getting a runnable starter on an EV. It's like 52%. Um, Pikachu is a little bit better. Or, yes, thank you for the correction. 56% uh, and 68% if you're running minus speed. And uh, for Pika, you're less hurt by that because it's Pika and friends run. Um, but uh, outside of minus attack, the, really any nature for Pika is runnable. Really good uh, menu there from both, say, all three runners. All three, all three runners with a fantastic opening menu there. Uh, we could be looking easily at the a, worst uh, menu in the run. It's because your hands aren't warmed up yet. So uh, here we go. But uh, but yeah, going back to what I was asking earlier, my bold prediction is that. Sandy's going to be taking the win at the end of this run. Um, I, I think I think all three of these runners are fantastic. I think Sandy's just got that slight edge at this point in time. I know Headstrong's been grinding etiquette. I know for for our race a couple of weeks ago, I know he kind of was uh, was just kind of getting back into uh, running Eevee due to uh, DK randomizers. Not that there's anything wrong with the the DK randomizers there. 
I mean, he did a run just the other day, got a 306, and lost three minutes and 20 seconds to a death. We've all been there before. It's like, Etiquette's very, very capable of pulling a 302, 303 out of the hat here. All right, Sandy. This is a race any of them can run, and Sandy's quickly getting motion control. Yeah, Sandy does have neutral, so uh, 27 CP on the Pikachu, which means I we at least have one runnable starter, so... And uh, I have a feeling we're not going to be checking natures for Headstrong and Etiquette. I have a feeling we're not going to be finding out their their natures until that first trainer in, in the forest, if we don't get a Route 2 bug before then. Yeah, we've seen some people elect to just go with the backup. Uh, the brace that's wrapping up right now, we saw Head Bob reset uh, to the backup. Um, we have seen people struggle, like myself, with minus attack. So it kind of is kind of up to you whether you want to try to make it work. The best way to deal with the bad nature is just to get lots of experience. Sometimes that's not possible. <laughs> it just kind of depends on what shows up. But uh, these runners are all very experienced, so they'll be able to uh, adapt as needed. And for, for those of you that are new here, the runners do have the option of having a neutral nature backup file ready to go. Um, they can opt to do so. If they do, it's about a 45 second time loss just going into that additional file. Uh, a minute if you're me and your Joy-Con just doesn't connect after uh, you load into that file. The headache gets checking. Calm. Okay, that's that's not runnable. So. That's gross. That is, that is a <laughs> that gross, is gross feature. So. Etiquette is opting to go for his neutral nature backup. So that does put him at about a 45 second disadvantage. Um, that could be the difference in this run between these three runners. If, if we're being, being completely honest, um, obviously we have a long way to go, but definitely, uh, definitely a little bit of a, a step off in the, the wrong foot there. Unfortunately for Etta. That's a very good point because in the race, that's, Currently, about to end, pretty much at E4 on the PSR TV One channel, we had Head Bob who reset for the backup, and he's a little more than 45 seconds behind the other two, but he's right there. So, without the backup, he, uh, it would be a much a little bit of a closer race on that end. But as you said, say, long way to go. Long about, way to go. Anything can happen from here. He'd be about where Tucker is if he hadn't uh, opted to to go to that backup file. Um, but uh, but yeah, we got. Uh, are dodging and weaving as we go up the route. Bad Rattata for Sandy there. Yeah, Route 1 is... It, it, it's a time. <laughs> it can either go really, really nicely and nothing spawns in your way, or rats spawn in the way, or immediately beeline right for you and it's Dodge City. Very much so, very much so. Um, and we did get the yeses for Headstrong like and Sandy Edith. when asked to get... Oh yeah, Edda's got the uh, got the fun route where everything spawned in that first patch of grass. Um, there is a little bit of a mash sequence that Edda's heading up to right now. Um, if you are mashing incorrectly, you can accidentally hit, say, uh, hit no to the Pokemon Center trainer or Pokemon Center person and you then have to walk all the way back. Um, Sadly, I've, I've done that a couple of times over the years. <laughs> yeah, I just mash any button, any button that is the same as A there. I avoid, I hold down B. <laughs> just just don't hit B. We'll get our first idea if Headstrong's Eevee is minus attack. Ooh, that looks Ooh. like a good roll. That is, that's at the very least. That's a really nice roll. A. I was gonna say that Two is that is, a, go. that is most likely a plus attack Eevee. Which that is, is really, not a bad really thing. good. And that was a solid, yep. I believe a solid 702 for that uh, that rival one split there for, for Headstrong. That sounds about I, right. I believe Headstrong had a plus attack uh, Eevee in her first race of the tournament as well. Which with the newer route or with the newer rocket hideout strats of Sizzly Slide that we'll talk about a little bit later on, that plus attack does come into uh, a little bit more of a favor compared to the uh, the previous strats where 
you really didn't rely on that plus attack that far into the run. Meanwhile, Etiquette getting a really nice fight, going T-Shock three turns in a row. No growls. No para. That's that's an important thing to do. No note. para yeah, is more a... important, but getting double growled can turn what normally is a three turn fight into a four turn. Very true. Of course, Very para true. can quickly turn that into a six or seven turn, and yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pika, and, uh, generally speaking, just four turns it, unless you're really lucky and you can get a plus three turn. Attack. Yeah. If we, yeah, plus uh, special if we attack, didn't... it's a three shot with Pikachu, I'm, or unless you crit. And then it's a three shot usually. We'll see. Here's where Sandy would would find out what their nature is. Um, we know it's neutral, but we can see where the AV is going. Um, we're not calling it going to call it Go Power here. I know we have a racer in this race who is a strong proponent of Go Power, but we don't talk about that here. I and while I was saying that, I completely missed what Sandy got, but it's fine. <laughs> I, I missed where his AV went as well. Um... But, uh, but no, very, very exciting. Headstrong did not get the early Route 2 bug, so we will find out what her EV is here for sure on this, uh, on this next fight. So, and the reason that Pikachu and EV find out in different parts of the run, um, EV gives a little bit more experience points compared to the Pikachu. Uh, in fact, it's one more experience point, so the Pikachu is able to level up on the Rattata, whereas EV needs one more that they get off of this Caterpie fight here. Yeah, Sandy didn't get the Route 2 bug. That either. looks like a. That's almost certainly a plus attack EV. That, that's a really good roll. sense of the minus stat here yep minus special attack Ooh, okay adamant Ooh. so that's she is adamant nature Definitely which should be minus, better but minus special attacks not terrible especially if you can get enough experience points to make up for that minus special attack stat um we will most likely be seeing rhyhorn strats yep. later on in the run most certainly um, because of that minus special attack the other part with that will come into round nine when you face the sand true is minus special attack may not oko and that can go into sand attack spam yeah that one that one i've started just pulling in uh bell sprout for uh for that 2c just to be on the safe side i uh, will see what headstrong does when that when we get to that point it'll be interesting to see how she navigates minus special attack on this and etiquette really good attack av from etta <laughs> Yes, very nice attack. AV looks to be a neutral attack or neutral nature. So he yeah, uh, I mean, it was a to... reset. So it has to be, doesn't it? Oh, the, yes, that's right. That's right. I forgot it was a reset. <laughs> uh, Headstrong just beat the trainer, which Pika runners don't know the name of. Um, seems like I call her Pocket Sand Polly. I don't know her name either. <laughs> it's Jocelyn. <laughs> that's it. It's Jocelyn. <laughs> I, I know this I, one I, I all too well because <laughs> I have nearly died to this fight. Well, Jocelyn, she's not that hard. She's just got a Pidgey. Tell that to Pocket Sand Spam that misses like five turns in a row and you live on two HP. Okay, so it looks like we got Caterpies for both Sandy and Headstrong. Headstrong missing the throw on the Caterpie recovers quickly and catches it. Headstrong also has a Pikachu on screen, which Sandy will not catch, obviously, because they're running Pikachu. Yep. I mean, Sandy could decide to do AOP at this point in the run, grab that Pikachu, and they're set now, you know. <laughs> oh, and Edda got Edda also gets the Pika. Pika. Everybody Edda has the Pikachu that, now. Edda stuff. got that pre-lure Pikachu. Let's see if he... Uh, my guess is he's going to deposit Pika when he goes to activate his lure. That way he doesn't have that Pika that's sitting at level 4 now, wasting 15 seconds attack. for... Or wasting 2 seconds for every level it uh, it gains as it goes. Yeah, that's an interesting it's an interesting point, because having the 2C for the first bug is, is kind of a nice bonus, because the bugs are not guaranteed at 1C, but you do lose a bit of time to the Pikachu level up, so... You do, and then he's losing time because Pika's breaking out. Headstrong's already oh, getting God. her first evolution. Etiquette is just having a bad time with this little Pika. It's only a level four Pika too. Like, <laughs> uh, 
stand the odds of this getting catch. in yeah. there we go i don't have what the the catch calculator would be on that my guess is that was probably like an 80 percent plus that broke out twice oh which that is definitely an 80 plus percent it was probably closer to like 90 plus let me pull that up uh sandy caught caterpie fought the metapod trainer now is catching weedle headstrong getting her bell sprout she is deciding not to play perfect rock attack left. cycle Not depositing the Pika. All right, so he's opting to have that higher chance of uh, of catch here. That was gets that bonus experience on that first bug. Sixty six percent on the Pikachu, by the way, for etiquette. Sixty, really? I, I figured it would be higher. And Sandy opting for the Forest Oddish. Yeah, you don't normally see Oddish as the third catch here because it's level 7 you ideally want it to be at least level 8 ideally even higher uh, for Brock but Sandy will most likely try to catch something outside to get at least one level on the Oddish try and get that uh, that glowing rat or uh, Pidgeon route 2 there yeah and if it's not glowing it's not, it's not the end of the world obviously it's not as optimal also going to get a couple evolutions for Sandy as well for both the bugs it looks like he has one bug. He's now going to actually deposit the Caterpie, so he opted to use the 2C for the bug there. Smart play. He does not have his Weedle let Yeah, let's see if he decides to play uh, Route 2 Roulette for Weedle in addition to Bellsprout. There's a Bellsprout on Etiquette screen. There is. Oh, there's a Beedrill. And we get that 1% spawn. Uh, going real quick, going over to that other race that's going on, it does look like Headbob is battling Lorelei right now. So it looks like he died somewhere along the way as he's got turnaround. And uh, it's really a race now between, or it looks like Ergote is about to, uh, about to finish up with Champion. GG for Ergo. With a, looks like a mid 302 pace. It's a really good run. Headbob probably died to Agatha. My guess is he died to Agatha. Mm -hmm. Based off of where he was at compared to the other two. Glowing Pidgey. Okay. For Sandy. Pidgey's, Pidgey's interesting. Uh, I ideally want Rat because Raticate's a much better catch than Pidgeotto. But Pidgey j does just fine. Getting Pidgeotto, though, isn't terrible. No, it's And fun. it does get you Pidgeot. Which quite often you're going Pidgey on six. Sandy has unmarked Pidgeotto and Pidgeot on his tracker. So it could be that he is not planning on going for them unless things go sideways along the run. Yeah, it's not the best very, catch, very but so I can I understand why why they went why they did that. It makes sense. It's 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 nice to yes. get it as an option, but and and it will be in their back pocket. Sure. Yeah, it's it's the same as like you know going for for moon bat. You really don't want to go for for a goal bat in rock tunnel at that point. You pretty much just oh yeah, it off as being an option. Yeah, you absolutely do not do that. Yeah, and Etiquette, Etiquette playing route two roulette. He does get a oh. glowing rattata that was right there by the edge, which is really good. But is Etta gonna just for go? Email like the other bug. Uh, he has, looks he has, like he did. He looks like he it. is forgoing the Weedle. He is forgoing Weedle. Wow. Which you know, it's it happens every now and again where you have to run without just because you don't get it. In this, in with this level of competition between these three runners. Unfortunately, he just doesn't have the ability to be able to stand for a minute or two, wait, or wait, you know, for a few seconds waiting for that Weedle to spawn. I understand why he opted for it, just to be able to try and catch up additional time there. Yep. Yeah, I don't think there was one on Route 2. Uh, there was I not. didn't see one. Looked like he had two rats, a Caterpie, and I don't remember what the other spawn was. Pidgey. Pidgey. Yep. Do that. Uh, one option you can do is if you don't see Weedles, you can catch Kakuna, but 
Um, I don't recall if there, there, was there wasn't either, either of those yeah. available for. Her. Yeah, he didn't have any any of that line spawn aside from the bee drill. Oh yeah. This is where you, for etiquette, you definitely really hope that Snack spawns, and you get the double moon. Yeah, if he if he can get double moon, and if he can get uh, Snack or Rock Snack in uh, Mount Moon, balances things out quite a bit there. Meanwhile, the very big difference to this gym here is Pikachu gets Oddish, which is a special attacker, and everything in Brock's gym is very specially weak, but they're physically bulky, whereas Eevee's Bellsprout is a physical attacker, so we don't use that. We actually use Eevee with double kick. Looks like etiquette. So Pikachu either has a faster fight. Looks like either Etiquette misclicked or he accidentally mashed a B when they was asked to show a uh, grass or a water type Pokemon to enter the gym there. Um, I don't Kicked know if you guys have he, he walked right back in. That's Kicked going on the montage. <laughs> <laughs> Etiquette wins kicked by Brock. Keeping in mind for those just coming in, Etiquette did reset for his neutral nature his backup so also, he did lose about 45 seconds there etiquette has double kick in slot one that's interesting the the funny thing is and i actually watched last year's race we actually uh razor and the other co i don't remember who the other commentators were but i remember razor was one of them y'all actually talked about it etiquette is oh headstrong got tagged by the spinner there no oh no I was going to say, you guys, they, they actually talked about it last year, how Etiquette's menuing for his move slots is a little bit different from how most runners are. Um, I believe Etiquette will have Headbutt in slot number four and Correct. will have uh, Buzzy Buzz in slot one. Oh, okay. So he does, he does run things a little bit different. Headstrong losing a... About four, it's about 40 seconds you lose on those one Pokemon optionals if it's a one shot, um, which it looked like she did get that one shot there. Sandy the getting the sand through. Very nice. And that's one advantage that Pikachu does have before Mount Moon. Only level four, um, though, so that's not going to give a lot. I mean, look at that level four, uh, level four Pikachu for Etta. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm just uh, from an experience perspective, it's going to be a guaranteed catch here with the two oh, seed, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. But uh, but Pika does have that advantage. They do have the two two catches that they can get on Route Four. Um, I would Eevee, actually, they do get... I would actually argue that advantage is completely null and void because Eevee gets Pika and gets Sneak. I was just about to say that Pikachu, <laughs> or, uh, Eevee gets the Eevee, oh, Eevee gets the Pikachu in the forest that Pikachu doesn't get, and then Ekans is always an option for uh, if it spawns there for Eevee. And technically, Eevee can also get me out. This but is true. Doesn't mm -hmm. always spawn. Yep. It's like Eevee does have more options as far as pokes. That's true. Which is opting to keep Cat really or Metapod nice, in slot two there. So what you'll find here is Sandy's going to keep Oddish in slot one for the next two fights. Yeah, so I think Headstrong is better plot in two isn't a big deal because Bellsprout's in three. And oh, Manky! Like and then when, That's and then really when, good. Headstrong, de when Headstrong deposits the Butterfree, Bellsprout will just slip into slot two, so it'll, it'll mm -hmm. be fine. Advocate with that bad Rattata spawn as he was going around that trainer there. 1C poke on Manky, okay. And he hits that spinner flawlessly. Looks like he did not hear that snack to go for it. Um, Sandy obviously going for that mankey there. And Etiquette and Sandy about to be getting the fastest fastest encounter in the game, the $500 match card. Let's see how the basement room looks for Headstrong. We want to see Clefairy, Geodude, and Paris. There are a couple of nice bonuses as well, which are, don't always spawn. There's the glowing Geo, which is nice for EXP. 
Okay, Zubats, and, you need to cool it. <laughs> and depending on uh, what time Headstrong set her game at, she should be well... She might be three to four minutes ahead of that second Moonstone respawn. So mm -hmm. it'll be... Uh, I'll be curious to know if she'll still be in that room for it or if, you know, it'll be... Uh, It'll be a minute after, you know, she's done with all of her catches and evolutions because she Most does have three runners I know split. set for yeah, 34. She's got, she's so got, she's got two evos here and then she'll get one more on the cocoon after. Yeah. So she should be fine. Yep. So when we say the double moonstone, um, so every poke, like everything that you pick up um, that is hidden, not an actual oh. pokeball, um, has a chance to respawn after the timer rolls over to the next day. So once we pit, so we set the timer to roll over while we're in this area. So at, like after we picked up the first moonstone to give us a chance for two moonstones and an extra poke. Yeah, I believe I believe it's a fifty percent chance that that moonstone. It is fifty percent correct. There. Although sometimes it feels like twenty. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, going over to that other race, it looks like Head Bob did lose in E4 again. He's back on Bruno, unfortunately. No. Head Bob going through the ringer. Come I on, know, come getting on, a on. getting a nice E4 must be nice. A couple so of here... a couple of points about, or sorry, a couple of points about Sandy's Oddish is it has good special attack and good speed, so it will um, get, it easily got the two shot on the Bell Sprout, uh, despite being only level ten, and then it will also speed the Sandshrew. The Sandshrew has sand attack on Josh, and so it'll actually uh, can cause some problems. Yep. So this is the difference here between Eevee and Pika because Pika already has Oddish in slot one. They actually opt to go for this fight first, and then go down the end of the room. Whereas Eevee just goes straight into the room and they take it on afterwards with Eevee at a higher level, so Headbutt has a chance to Oko. Yeah, and that's a good point, but, and I will also like to add to that is if you are close to getting double Moonstone, uh, and if fighting that trainer would prevent you get from um, getting it, um, sometimes I will actually just go into the basement early and grab it and then fight the trainer after. I would 100% agree with that. It's more worth it to get the double moonstone than take an extra, like take that fight early. Yeah, and even, is and a even little... still Oddish could still be in slot one. You don't have to swap it up after the basement yep. anyway. Uh, something I noticed: Headstrong is a little light on her EXP right now. She is needing a pink thing to show up, either the Clefairy or the Clefable, or uh, uh, again that that Rock Snack that we talked Speaking about. Speaking of Clef, everything of... has spawned for Sandy. <laughs> The gang is here. Sandy got rich. <laughs> and Headstrong just going, hoping to see that Clefairy spawn later on in uh, in Mount Moon here. Um, Etiquette is running as well, waiting to see if he gets that Clefairy to spawn. I didn't see what his EXP looked like, though, after his catches. He should be in okay. Uh, oh, no, he it's did not 13. get Geodude. There was a Geodude in there. Is he? There's there a Clefairy. There's a Clefairy. Just spawned. So he will absolutely backtrack just slightly to grab that Clefairy. I'm I'm surprised he did not grab that glowing Geodude that was there though. I'm surprised. Doesn't get the headbutt. That's not uncommon, especially here at 13. On a neutral nature, like, that would just have to crit. Um, the advantage of Headbutt is it does have a chance to flinch. Which, that Sandshrew can use Sand Attack, and things can go sideways rather quickly. It's got Sand Attack, and it's got Poison Sting, which is a 30% chance to poison. I've, uh, I'm blowing the Clefairy! Well. And the rich get richer. Sandy doing a second menu just to clear out things in case that he does have a Wumbo on this Clefairy here. Yep, so every time you have a glowing Pokemon, the EXP is going to be 2x multiplier. And, if, and it has uh, 2x for glowing. Is it two? I thought it was 1.5. It's 2x for glowing. And then it has a chance to go 4x if it's 
a extra large or extra small. Which can vary... Oh, is it 1.5? Okay. Yeah, it... It can add up a lot of EXP really, really fast. Headstrong yeah, is just kind of get the first looking at through here. So Headstrong's almost done with all of her fights in uh, in Mount Moon here on a very fast pace. Um, this, is her this is gonna be like a thirty one oh, and level time. okay though is a question. That's her count like, is, good. is fine. Her levels low, and, and her experience close. points are low. Uh, it's adamant. Headstrong's strong, still missing Clefairy. So uh, Headstrong has etiquette etiquette adamant. The neutral. other two are neutral. Yep. Headstrong's is adamant. Etiquette is neutral, and Sandy is neutral. It actually reset for, like, had a, he had like, a reset a calm. He had a clam nature to begin with. So, Etiquette's actually running his backup. And there's a big pink thing on Sandy's screen. Can we get some bonjours? Bonjour? That? We got bonjour on screen. Glowing bonjour. Thank you, Ember. So, Sandy is not having to worry about experience points for the next. Nope. For pretty much the rest oh, of the month. Oh, does run not get this. the excellent though. Did not get the excellent. It's still going to be a lot of experience. Oh, and Headstrong, Headstrong gets, gets oh, Onyx. That's, that's a huge Onyx for Headstrong. That is really, really good. Moon Onyx Headstrong is actually not that bad. It's worthwhile here. I was going to say, it's like a 70% with a nice throw, isn't it, for uh, mm -hmm. Moon Onyx? Speaking of nice throw. There it is. Speaking of. Okay, Sandy gets the Chansey. How much EXP is Chansey going to give? 2100. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's plenty. <laughs> yeah. You're already level 18. Sandy will be 19 leaving Moon. <laughs> Headstrong is now at 15 easily. Yeah, that, that Onyx was huge. She was needing Edda something. definitely has enough the, for uh... 15. That's a 16 poke exit. Etiquette for still needs to be as well, just so you. Uh... Everybody knows. He did skip Geodude, that is correct. Also, etiquette going right between the two fossils, but the game makes you take the Helix. <laughs> I mean, it's Just... Lord Helix. Why Why would it give you anything <laughs> other? <laughs> I mean, unless you're taking AOP and then we just take Dome. Um, etiquette also, if anyone has just joining us, etiquette, is, etiquette also did not see a Weedle or a Kakuna in the forest, so it does not have that entire evolutionary line. Sandy just got ran down by a Clefairy there. Apparently it wanted to go with him. Oh, another oh, one. And then another Gross. one. Gross. <laughs> Matt, why did you have to say that? Why? why he got ran down curse. by one. He got ran down by one. That's what I was talking about. Not the one <laughs> he ran into next. <laughs> I know it's the commentator's curse. Yeah, that sixteen poke moon is going to be huge for Sandy later on in this run. Um, Etiquette's going to be, I think, the one that's going to be feeling it the most, though, with him being at that really low ten out of uh, fifty pokes for uh, for later in the game. There. Oh, that's strong with another onyx. <laughs> The chain going hard. The, the the bonus encounters of this run are not. There's the geo. Today. There's the geo. Edda opting for the off lure geo, well, which I am I am very surprised he did not go for the glowing one in the room. I'm wondering if maybe he forgot about it or he just didn't see it. I, I, yeah, I, it has to be something like that. I, I would I imagine mean, you probably just didn't catch it. Like, didn't notice it was there. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to remember to ask him later on. So, uh, Headstrong is the first of the three to get to uh, Cerulean there. 
And this is where Eevee picks up not one, but three moves, whereas Pika will get one. Eevee's going to grab a all three or 90 base power moves, which are very powerful. But you're going to get a 90 base power electric move known as Buzzy Buzz that is always going to crit. No. Well, not always, always crit, para. always para. Pika always crits. I can't. Anyway. Uh, it's also going to have a 90 base power water move, which is Bouncy Bubble, which is basically absorb. So it's going to heal Eevee for half the damage it does. And then the fire move, Sizzly Slide, will do... Well, will always burn. Incredibly powerful moves. Yeah, Eevee, Eevee gets a total of, uh, what, seven of these moves throughout the... <laughs> seven or eight of these moves throughout the entire run, because it gets one for every Eevee Lucian type. So the Let's first... Let's not talk about the best of the moves, Batty Bad. Uh, Batty Bad is a good one. We don't, we don't <laughs> get Batty Bad, unfortunately. Nope. Eevee will get one more move later on, which we will bring up when we get there. Pika here gets... Zippy Zap, which is a plus two priority and always crits. And is 50 base power. So the base power is lower, but you get the stab at crit, so that yep. makes it overall a bit stronger than the other. Makes it overall, yeah. Makes it overall broken with the, you know, 110 base. It's incredibly speed. powerful. Start yeah. Pika. It is a physical move. Now I did Which, miss what etiquette special attack is on his Eevee as he did his uh, did his moves here, so I'm not sure what his range is looking like on this Goldeen here. Uh, Headstrong definitely she's running that minus special attack, so she definitely did not have any favorable range on that Goldeen without a crit. And it also does not get it. Did not, but he got the full para, which is nice. And it will definitely need to heal here, though. Yeah, I don't know if he's done his party management uh, menu here yet. Yeah, he's doing that. Now right he will. Now. I don't think any of our runners got the double moon, though. Nobody did get the double moon. Headstrong, I think, left the room before she would have found out if it was double moon or not. Yeah, um, Headstrong just, just been She flying. was on a ridiculous pace through, uh, through Mount Moon there. Unfortunately, oh, gets burned. So that is going to cost her a couple of extra seconds to heal that burn off here uh, in a, a couple of minutes. Yep, it's that thirty percent burn. That's really unfortunate. And welcome on in, Raiders from the earlier race today. Congrats to Ergo on his win. GGs to Tucker and uh, Head Bob as well. Head Bob, I, I was watching there. I'm sorry you had bad luck in E4. Uh, normally, that's my thing. I'm sorry to have passed that on to you today. We have had a bonjour. We did get bonjour. Um, Sandy got the bonjour. And that has made up quite a bit of time. He is low on catches compared to Headstrong. He's two pokes down. Right. Um Edda is also running the backup file here. This is true. This is true. He is running with a 45 seconds. And started eight that. seconds behind the others. I think I think that was more stream delay than anything else. But uh, but yes, he is currently Quite delayed possible. by eight seconds. <laughs> so Etiquette's probably right on pace with Headstrong right now, then, if we factor oh, yeah. that eight seconds in. <laughs> And uh, now we get to everybody's favorite part of the run where they just kind of, you know, zone out and just mash A for headbutts and bouncy bubbles and zippy zaps. And, <laughs> and yes, Quante was a Wombo Chansey, correct? Yes. Yeah, a uh, second throw non-excellent was still 2,100 experience points. Which put Sandy's Pika and Oddish at 18. <laughs> Sandy might have Thunderbolt before uh, Rival 3 here at this pace. Mm. 
Great. And we are all three trainers now on uh, on Nugget Bridge. You know, does anybody have any any interesting stories or any uh, you know anything to entertain the people as we go through kind of this uh, <laughs> this five minutes of uh, you know just mashing and, and battles. I was going to suggest we start a hangman, but Amber has beat me to it, so have that. Amber's it. Amber's all over it today. Amber's the goat. Uh, Sandy's level twenty right now. This will make this next fight kind of interesting um, because the Oddish on the rival is a two shot normally, and Headbutt is normally used. But because Sandy's level twenty, you may see they, them go for quick attack. To avoid the hit potion from rival. Interesting. Let's see what happens here. The etiquette headstrong of both dispatching the co-duck here. You know, it's it's just it's so convenient that there's these five trainers that are lined up on this uh, on this bridge here, you know, able to, to get some experience points for if you have a bad Mount Moon and you don't exit at level 15 for uh, for Misty here gives you that option to be able to go up and, and around does cost about 30 seconds of, of time going that route, but uh, certainly an option for uh, for runners if they you know, do have a bad Mount Moon or, or bad early game and just don't have enough experience points to be able to go battle Misty to begin with. Now, do we do we think we're going to be seeing Meowth at the top of this uh, at the top of this here for, for Headstrong and Etiquette or Venonat for any of these three runners today? That would be really nice. I, I know Etiquette probably wouldn't complain. No. I missed what uh, Sandy, you know, what happened with the Oddish for Sandy, but it looks like it was went well. No poison powder. And strong getting that second of the basic of three heal turns on the uh, on the bridge. Ed gets just starting that fight. And one of my and favorite... should be leveling up here really quickly, so we should be able to see what our special attack here is. Attack. Levels up now. Uh, 34. He is, he is 38 speed as well, so he is going to be a speed tie at 18 with uh, rival 3 Pidgeotto. Without um, depending a... On where, depending on where his AV goes, correct. Now, my favorite part of tri piece of trivia about the Nugget Bridge is this last trainer here, this, you know, this nice guy that gives you a Nugget that's secretly a Team Rocket agent trying to talk you into joining. Depending on where you are standing when you start talking to him, you'll have one of two different backgrounds. Uh, Headstrong, because she talked to him on the bridge, she gets the bridge background, whereas Etiquette was on the dirt in front of him, so he now has the forest background instead. So. One of my kind of favorite things, a little bit of trivia on uh, Nugget Bridge here is just depending on where you're standing, you can get a different background for him. Meanwhile, Sandy on that um, Oddish fight actually opted to just go ahead and headbutt twice and risk the, no, Sand Shrew, sorry, risk the Sand Attack and Poison Sting and didn't get either just Really solid fight. It's not uncommon to see some Pika runners actually to see that fight with the Oddish. And, and, well, and I got both. both. And I got and both. both. And and meow. And meow. Really yeah, he, good here. He, he, he needs these, both of them. Desperately needed both of them, especially with opting out of that uh, that Weedle earlier in the run. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys no. mentioned, but Sandy um, on that Sandy show almost got the one shot with Headbutt because they're level 20. Uh, which is wild. With plus attack, he would be one shotting that for sure. Let's see if Sandy gets lucky with that Venonat up top in a spot where he'll go for it. 
Not that he needs it. This is actually also where Etta wishes that Pete, like, um, Squirtle had spawned. Now, if Etta gets rare char, there's no way Etta doesn't go for it. Almost certainly. I mean, what do you guys, you know, when, when you guys are going through your, your runs and everything, when you're exiting Cerulean, you know, that's where I do my split is is on that uh, exiting of the, the house, the dig house there. What is I your guys' ideal... After... What is your guys' ideal catch count for your Cerulean split? Um, I'm normally exiting at, with 13, and I split on the exit of Bill's house. I don't know what I normally get, but I know my PB had 20. Good God, free! Uh, and I split oh, no. when I split on the fade. I split Edda. on the fade out when uh, after peak. We have a freeze back. on Edda. Did, did we? Oh, oh, we did not lose Edda two power. Hopefully, we did not lose uh, Edda two power outage this time. <laughs> Oh, uh, looks go. like looks like we're back up and running for Etta there. But uh, he did opt to go 18 for those. and gets to 41, gets the speed AV. Not that speed AV, so he is safe for uh, rival three. He doesn't have to worry about pocket sand from the Pidgeotto, which is why we now run with uh, Bellsprout in slot two, just to kind of hopefully draw that attack to the Bellsprout side. Um, as Headstrong sees a loose Squirtle being chased by Officer Jenny. You need to do an, an investigation, or an EV investigation, if you will. Never mind that there's a big old hole right in the middle of the house, like... <laughs> I mean, I don't know where the criminals could have gone. <laughs> no idea. There's only footprints everywhere. Yeah, so I, I split when the Eevee comes running back to you, and there's a fade out there. That's where I split. See, oh. I always split exiting through the uh, the hole in the wall. <laughs> Everybody does something different. It's a consensus. You split somewhere after Bill when you're exiting uh, Cerulean there. It's kind of the, the consensus, I feel like. It is not doing the ditch, Bill. Uh, also, the headstrong there are doing a nice little bit of tech there. You t just before entering this rival cutscene, if you turn to face him direct head on directly, you skip the turn as you uh, as the cutscene begins. That saves a tiny bit of time. Yeah, say so there's lots of lots of micro movements that I feel like all three of these runners, if if we watch all three of them, we'll see those small micro movements throughout the runs. You know where you're saving those few additional seconds throughout the entire course of the run just by not having a slow turn or anything like that that's going to cost you that that time in the long run. That's a good you know, point, Gavin. A... Maybe split right where the rival kisses you. That actually sounds like a, like a good spot. Sounds, sounds like a perfect spot to split. Mm-hmm. now picking up our lone money item for headstrong in the underground path yeah there are a few a few uh, random money items in here um which are picked up in aop and diploma but uh we're not gonna grab those here because we don't need all that money here we just need the extra five thousand from the nugget and you're good now, something to keep in mind when Etiquette does do that menu at the end there, he is going to have to deposit that Venonat and Meowth. Otherwise, it's basically just going to be additional uh, experience and time waste uh, in his party for, uh, for any catches if he goes for any on uh, Route 6 there. Ooh, Vulpix for Headstrong. A couple of them. She had a Psyduck as well, which I don't see her going for. I think she'll probably plan to go for that Route 17 Psyduck. That'll be a, a candy Evo for Golduck there. Almost certainly. Now, this route here is where Sandy will need to find a pup. Needs to get the Growlithe. Because Pika doesn't have any moves like Eevee does, where it can just use special effective moves on anything. Pika relies on other pokes 
like Growlithe, which oddly enough, Growlithe gets Flamethrower at 17, because I don't know why. Ooh. And we Another got bonjour. a big pink thing Hello. on the screen. Bonjour, come on, bonjour. Ça va. I'm strong. And she does not get the jumping chancy, which is always nice. It's not glowing, so it won't be. It's we, we it's still, still gonna be that, a though. lot of experience. It will still be a lot of experience. Very it just good. won't be obscene the eye. <laughs> but that does help make up yeah, for her being minus. Yeah, twenty-one yeah. Eevee. So she so going into this next fight here at level 18 with minus special attack that ev if i remember correctly is a range it's a favorable range but it's a range against that pidgeotto she Correct. just negated that range um, and she also, also negated, negated that range, the range the with the freaking sandro so she's she's clean that was really that was, big that was a very good catch for her that, that is a 65 percent catch Five, nice. And Etiquette gets his Vulpix. Growlithe for Sandy. And, and no Clean for Route Six strong. get. We get to everybody gets to have a heart attack watching Etiquette Ooh. do his uh, trainer skip here in a second. Sandy missing the circle on Growlithe, so we'll see what happens. Sandy's gets it Sandy. anyway. Sandy's experience is totally fine so missing out on a little bit of experience from not getting the excellent is okay because they have thunderbolt now that was a really cringe vulpix it just would not stop bouncing it's like no 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 stop bouncing let me throw here okay oh, also gets does get the puff okay gets both that's he, he desperately needed that he would very much love to see an abra and he got the excellent on the puff, even though it did start that. Uh, oh, that jump Sandy there. hit the optional. Oh, no. Now that's the better of the two optionals for Pika yes. to hit. Just because you yes. have the. You get the char versus the bell sprout. Sandy has Thunderbolt too, so this is a one shot. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that Sandy has Thunderbolt right now is wild. Oh, it still goes for Zippy, though. Etiquette did not do his usual uh, heart attack movement through those two where he goes at an ankle. <laughs> I mean, the puff kind of said no to that, so. And uh, we're doing our, our second second of our three shops that we do throughout the run here. And um, going back for the puff. <laughs> <laughs> might as well. In might that as situation, well, you because you, you hit the trainer, you might as well just go up right you back. You know you're going to be safe coming back through. I think in my in my race, my round two race, I mm -hmm. did the skip and then there was and then an ab respond. I'm like, ah, I'm not going back for that. <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah, do the skip I, four times. My 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 round three race, I hit the uh, hit the bell sprout trainer. Fortunately, I ran Eevee, so I just you know a one turn move. But oh, Sandy went that... Pidgeotto. Interesting. Oh, it's a uh, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Sandy did already get the Pidgey earlier, so getting Pidgeotto here locks Sandy out of Pidgeot. Which I think is fine. I think Sandy's... Yeah. I, I'm i sure he's okay with opting out of Pidgeot in this run. Yes. <laughs> that does Something... put Sandy at 54 planned range. Something to keep an eye on as well is... Uh... Sandy's been using double greats since that Chansey, I believe. So we uh, something to keep in mind. We might have to keep an eye on that uh, that great ball count through this uh, this next section here of uh, of catches. Unless he's planning to to purchase more. I don't know that he'll purchase more as much as probably pick up the great balls outside of. Yeah. Rock tunnel. Heads run cleanly through rival three. And at a otter or tails.
Not a lot of time here is separating Headstrong and Edda, even with Edda deciding to reset and take his backup file. And, uh, and them being at that same catch count now is uh, it's absolutely huge, uh, especially when you consider the fact he was at 11 pokes uh, entering into uh, Cerulean there. I did miss if uh, Headstrong and Etiquette both got the good uh, good spin cycles on uh, the rival entering the boat. Um, that is one of the areas that you could shave off like a full second if you line up properly talking to rival for when you first get onto the SSN. Uh, you don't have a slow turn that costs you time to move to that point. I think I Sandy, did, Sandy got the perfect. Sure. Sandy hit it perfect there. So I know it's a, it's a small window of movement that you have there, but uh, can can make up a little bit of time. Still 19 pokes right now for Sandy is really high. I think I've had 55 20... planned for both Headstrong and Sandy right now. I think I've had 22 as my highest ever for Rival 3, and that's just because I had literally everything spawn the entire run up to that point. And Headstrong is safe on the way back up. So about a minute and a half splits Headstrong and Edda at the moment. Which that's about right for the uh, the Venonat and Meowth catches that uh, Etiquette had to get in the Cerulean there. Yep. Which Edda desperately needed those. Because for those who don't know who came in from the other race, Etika did not get any of the Weedle line. Uh, did anybody see what Headstrong's attack stat looked like after uh, on her last level up? I did not. Because I just plus attack. I, I didn't see what her shop was. She might be in range that she she might be able to one shot this Eevee with headbutt. In which case, she could actually do a 2C fight on uh, Alicia here and uh, not have to worry about using a guard spec. But I'd imagine she like she's probably does way. outspeed. Like, sorry, does one shot. It is 21. She oh, is it's going, going for it. All right. It's going for it. I think she has a guaranteed here. Um. So, Phoenix... Right now, Edda, did, Edda is running his backup and did not get any of the Weedle line. Runs are runs, are runs you know. Uh, Etiquette was a little low on catches. Um, yeah, Sandy Etiquette was really low on catches. To show up. <laughs> Managed to find Venonat and Meowth on Route 25, which is really, really good. And we've had two big pink things get uh, get caught in this run so far. We've I had two the, more I it's the lone one. And Headstrong just taking the easy route against Alicia here. Just one shot. The Let's easy, go runners period, Phoenix. Let's be honest. All three are fantastic. Yeah, this race is very close. So Sandy with four catches. Definitely, it's, it's very close. Definitely dead even with the others. You take that into account. Like, Etta started on our, on our end, started about eight seconds behind, and had the reset for his backup file. And Headstrong, again, her being level 21, this is no longer a fear on this sand true here. She should be safe to just bouncy bubble it, okay. knock it out, and... Man, he's good. I, I, knew, I knew that. Just, uh... There's why. So you'll notice there's, here. There's our, there's our copy go boss. For, so etiquette going for the 1C fight here. Uses the guard spec and got growl turn 1. This Eevee has growl, tail whip, and sand attack, which is why we use the guard spec here. You don't yeah, want to get sound attack. You don't want to get growl. Both are really bad. 
you have a 50% chance of the EV using a bad move without that guard spec, so... Definitely, and unless definitely you're really high worth. attack or a high enough level, you will not Oko it with Headbutt. Yep. Alright, Headstrong about to head into the Route 10 grass. This is where... It's the good passes on the two spinners there. This is where... Uh, it's Nidorina okay. Melnito. Okay. <laughs> and Nidorino. All three are glowing. <laughs> Let's see if so Headstrong got both baby Evos, because I believe there was Nidoran female right next to the Nidoran male as well. It's a Nidorina. I don't know about... I don't no, there was Nidorina up Nidor. top. There was a Nidoran female that was where the Nidoran male was. Is there? I believe I saw that. That is wild. So she got both baby bunnies and their evolution spawn, <laughs> if, I, if I'm right. She gets her Weeping Belt Evo, getting that uh, chance he was huge for that. And Etika opting to do his menu there instead of doing it next to, uh, next to Alicia. Oh, Sandy doing oddish Pika strats for Alicia here. Gonna, oh, oh, that's the flinch on Gloom, okay. It's a little bit slower, but doesn't take a hit for Gloom. Okay, there is yep, a Nidoran female. Headstrong did there. have the Nidoran was... female there. Yep. Uh, my favorite route of mine that I've had in this route is I caught Nidorino, Nidorina, and Firo. The, the small forms did not show up. <laughs> you know it's a bad one. <laughs> Had to grab those three and not the hey, babies. Hey, you get the first ball. It's a good experience. I won't disagree with that. And etiquette is clear of the uh, <laughs> Dearest, let's go. The uh, David there. Oh, okay. Drew. Spiro and Krabby on for Headstrong, very good. Love yeah, Headstrong with a perfect Route 10. Good, good secondary yep. wave of uh, spawns there. Yeah, and etiquette, no, etiquette, etiquette did not get hit by that spinner. That is, uh, that's a, a rough Spiro, spinner to get hit Rata. by. Is not going to wait for the other two things to spawn here. Just goes right for the bird. So a lot of times, often you'll find like you'll find a lot of runners, myself included, will wait for all four spawns here on this route before we go for anything. Just so we don't end up with catch chains from the other spawns. I have ADHD and patience issues. I, I, I don't like standing around <laughs> waiting for them. I <laughs> waited 30 seconds for things to spawn in my round two race, so... <laughs> it can it can troll a bit. Yeah, Etiquette gets Nidoran as well, that's good. Uh, we'll see how Etiquette Jane does this fight. I don't know if this... I've actually calc this. The Oddish it can be slower than Sandshrew and it's not guaranteed to kill. Actually, I think it's guaranteed to kill, but it's not guaranteed to outspeed, but they do get the outspeed, so good fight. Same. This Remember, was a fast Oddish, so yeah, there was that, that is advantage. True. It was fast, you're right. And he gets the Gloom Evo off of this as well. Don't forget, Etiquette did get Rattata on Route 2 as well, so he is not going to be going for that Rattata on the screen. Um, he is looking for Eradicate, though, which if he can get a glowing Eradicate first ball, that is very nice experience points for him. Ooh, okay. Double kick Acid. With the There's a female Nito. On the Eradicate actually worked as well. Okay, so Etta has everything here. Everything but the Krabby, and I don't see him standing around waiting for Krabby. I think he's going to go after this catch. Just because that Krabby is a 10% uh, spawn on this route. So Headstrong did not get a rat yet. Has both Nidos. Not the Krabby and the Hero. Yeah, so Crab really can't he, go for anything else here. He so. waited just a little bit and gets Crab. Gets rewarded for waiting. Oh, there's Firo. See if Sandy goes for Firo. Their 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 catch count is good, but uh, it's a pretty bold strategy.
Headstrong is getting Nidorino evolution here. Um, let's see if she opts for Nido King strats throughout uh, Rocket HQ as well, with her being that minus special attack. Uh, I don't know if she will, because she does have plus attack, which will guarantee any of the potential ranges from double edge. No, True. double edge is ever going to be a range. Etiquette looks like he's good on Route 10 as well. Yep. Has everything there. Yeah, he had uh, he had two Spiro or two Firo spawn at the uh, at the end there. In fact, depending on Headstrong's attack, she could actually double edge on J and J two. However, if you do that, you need to put in a fairy in the second slot, or you will die. Oh, and Sandy going for the glowing radicate. Right, this is interesting. Sandy, here. Sandy is not afraid of getting experience points this run today. Sandy's catch count has been really, really solid. Meanwhile, that song is 57 turn. planned right now. Oh, that's a wobble rat. <laughs> that is a big oh, rat. Oh, wow. That is a really big right, rat. So, uh, it's, like, it's like catching a Route 10 chance. A few <laughs> extra levels on Gloom and Spiro there. But... 27 Bika before getting into Rock Tunnel. <laughs> Well, Sandy's Nido King is now juiced for uh, Rocket <laughs> Night Out. <laughs> yeah, so Sandy could could get Crab, could get Nidoran Female. Otherwise, uh, they can get out of here. I'm pretty sure um, they can just leave. They don't see anything else. No need to stick around. I mean, no. Sandy's got enough catch count here that they're fine without Female Nido. I was say this is this is kind of the section where we'll see them see the runners start kind of thinning out their catch routes and everything. Uh, I see Headstrong's got 57 planned, Sandy's got 55 planned, Etiquette's got 51 planned. So um, I, I feel like over these next uh, next few minutes as they're going through Rock Tunnel, we're going to see them kind of start navigating out the stuff that they don't need to worry about catching. You know, things like for example, yep. uh, Boober for Headstrong or um, you know, the, the tentacle line for Sandy. Uh, just we kind do of see Headstrong going for Nido Kings. It is possible we see Nido King strats in... In Eevee. Hideout. It is not often that we see Eevee run Nido King strats. Attic rare char for Atta a rare char! Rare char oh, is huge that. for Atta. Oh, can't see it for Sandy, but they already have it. <laughs> That is really, really good for Etta. Does he go for it, though? Sandy's just getting all the big pink things today. <laughs> um, I think if if I'm Etiquette in, this, in his situation, I'm going for that rare char 100% of the time at this point. I go for it. If it breaks out once, then I run away. Nope. I, uh, I, I think it's worth getting the two pokes, even if it breaks out once. I'm of the opinion that once you start throwing balls, you, you're you're committed. So <laughs> you don't run away unless it runs first. It, oh, if I'm meta, I'm absolutely going for it here. I'm absolutely going for it here. But he realizes he's got a decent catch count here, so he, he doesn't necessarily need it. It doesn't hurt. Headstrong did get the glowing graveler. So she's going to get a lot of experience. I believe she has all of her three level Evos in her party right now as well. So they'll, uh, they'll benefit from this greatly. Good timing on the throw there. I believe Headstrong's really only missing Rhyhorn and... Uh, no, says it, that she's, Headstrong does not have Cubone, by the way. She does not have Cubone, okay. He has the other two. That's 4,800. That is a big boy. That was Wumbo. 28 on Eevee already for Headstrong. Picking up double edge here. 
Uh, headstrong also with a level 27 Spiro. <laughs> these summons the second controller, which is normal here because he's actually doing a fight. I do not think he goes for the EV, like the rare char. Did remove 2C for this fight. It could just be that he was just trying to get rid of it just to make this a faster fight. It's possible, but sure. 26 for... Crab and Chop are both almost 27, which is really nice. Headstrong is going to be going through a lot of evolutions here. Not that that's a bad thing, just means that she's getting that, uh, you know, kind of getting that little bit. Etiquette, Etiquette rare char. does skip rare char, yes. Or goes the rare char. Will we see a Kangaskhan in this run, in this race? I mean, I'm commentating, so chances are good. <laughs> it's not an AOP run that I'm doing, so chances are good. <laughs> I see them all the time in any percent, and I never see them in AOP. Right? <laughs> so, like, all three of our runners are still looking for their, uh, their Rhyhorn. So not a Wombo on the Graveler from Etta. But Sandy now does have his Nido King. Which will be in slot the rest well, pretty much the entire time. Oh, there's an Onyx. Oh, Rhyhorn. Perfect. Our so first Rhyhorn sighting. That is really good. Headstrong did remove the Nido King from her party, so it does look like she is not planning on using Nido King strats. Um, she did not catch Jigglypuff, it looks like, so that could be why she evolved the Nidorino, just because she doesn't know she's going to be getting that Jigglypuff, and she had Nidorino yep. in her party. And this, this EV is already level 28. <laughs> I mean, you can never have too much experience points with a... Uh, no, With you do not need Nido when you have double edge. Reality is here, more than likely what we're gonna see is the Rhyhorn strat. Yeah. We might gets, see double edge. We might see a double edge J and J. I mean it's like if we don't get be... Rhyhorn, I would almost guarantee it's gonna be a double yeah. edge J and J. Yeah, if we don't get Rhyhorn, it's gonna be double edge J and J. Or the old school strats of uh Graveler and Fairy type. Headstrong getting a lot of Onyx spawns. And yeah, still no Rhyhorn for Headstrong. Um, one thing to kind of compare, it looks like Etiquette and Headstrong are pretty close. Um, however, Etiquette's EV is four levels lower than Headstrong's. And Sandy's yeah. Pikachu, so. Yeah, and that's, that's going to make a big difference as we go through Rocket Hideout. Um, just because a lot of the ranges that Etiquette will have, Headstrong won't have with that uh, that attack stat. Yep. Meanwhile, Headstrong and Etta definitely want to see Rhyhorn here. As on Eevee's side, that is our runner. The like up until we get to Route 17 and we get the pony. Gonna run that spinner for Etta. And the second spinner. There's Rhyhorn. Etta, Etta gets, gets Rhyhorn. the Rhyhorn. And I, I, I could be mistaken. It's either an Onyx or that's a Kangaskhan in the lower left hand corner of Headstrong's screen. <laughs> I just saw a black. It looked like a black arm in that uh, in that corner there. I, again, I could be wrong. And Headstrong's just able to use double edge on these uh, on this fight here. Um, I did miss what her speed stat is, but my guess is she's probably fast enough to outspeed the Kadabra, or else she and would 28 be twenty-eight, uh... probably. No, it's not. Okay. Is probably gonna die here. Actually, it does die. And Sandy just got his glowing graveler. And Etiquette just needs Machop to spawn in here now. 
That is a Graveler, yeah, for Headstrong in the lower left, not Kanga. Okay. Like I said, I just saw the arm, so yeah. I th And there's oh, the and there's her Rhyhor. <laughs> Headstrong getting that last second Rhyhorn before she starts going through, uh... Before that, that last lure runs out. Needle at 29 already for Sandy. That is... <laughs> Insanely high. <laughs> Safe to say, I don't think we're gonna see any Nido King ranges. Yeah, the thing with the new Sandy's Nido King is we don't know what its attack stat is, and that is kind of relevant for one fight in particular. In hideout on the Hypno. But. Being yeah. at 29, I think that might just forego that. <laughs> Now, something to keep in mind, too, uh, because Rhyhorn is the last catch for Headstrong, unless she gets something in the grass before Cerulean, or uh, before Celadon, um, her Rhyhorn will only be level 24 for that first Jesse and James fight, which does mean that Arbok is a less favorable range for uh, Rhyhorn to one-shot. Significantly less favorable. Uh, all three runners now have their uh, now have their friend basically in their party slot number two. Uh, for Pikachu, um, that means we got Nido King. Have Cubone, so. No, Headstrong doesn't have Cubone. Headstrong um, has, Etiquette, uh, Etiquette has does March. not have. Um, no chop chop. Yeah. Yep. Sandy should have everything. Sandy doesn't have chop Sandy either. Does not have chop oh, either. Oh no. Okay. Sandy and Etiquette both have a little bit more to go through in here. It does look like Headstrong already has marked off Cubone, so she's yep. not worrying about it, which she had 55 planned, so she really didn't need to worry about it. Plus, there's always the chance of Tower oh, We have another Eevee fainting on screen. <laughs> Ooh. Did, uh, was it Confusion hit self? I Probably. See. Okay, it just means that it's less likely for turnarounds now. Ooh, crabby no crab is dies. Awkward now. Let's see if Etiquette opts to revive the Krabby so it can continue to level up, otherwise it may not be evolving. I'll say it'll it'll revive when he hits that uh, the next free heal he basically gets is going to be that uh, plate and tower. And oh, Rhyhorn Rhyhorn goes down. Oh no. Is Edda gonna center heal? He might. I, I wouldn't be surprised after that fight. There's a reason that, that Sophia was unfortunately really bad. There's a reason Sophia was my least favorite opponent in the run. Is not for the going for it. Time. Just simply revives the the Rhyhorn, Rhyhorn, and foregoes reviving Crab. Yeah, which is not a terrible thing to do. Um, it just means that he's going to be getting Crabby or Kingler later on in the run than he normally would, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, he could also just unmark Kingler and just not bother evolving. Yes. But looks like he's planning to evolve it for now. He does plan on it. Yeah, it looks like. Also, something to note, and again, this the, the other two runners haven't cleared out their stuff that they're not planning on catching. Um, Etiquette does look like he kind of has his catch route planned currently for the rest of this run. Um, he does have Tentacool currently unmarked, although with no get, without getting a chop, I could see him adding Tentacool, Tentacruel back into his, uh, into his planned route the rest of the way here. Um, and then Sandy and, and Headstrong both are still playing well over 50, uh, 50 pokes at this time. All right, Sandy finally out of tunnel after getting ratioed by a bunch of encounters. Yeah, Etiquette's out too. And Headstrong is uh, looking at ghosts. So as of right now, Headstrong is definitely ahead, but Sandy's 
not actually all that far behind, especially with having four pokes on the advantage. Oh, definitely, definitely, and yeah. it's uh, it's funny that you actually mentioned that, just because, like I said, I actually watched their race from last year, earlier today, and most of their previous race, uh, I believe it was etiquette that was, like, catches ahead of everybody else, and just because of that, over time, everybody else, or, you know, everybody else was able to kind of creep up on him as uh, as he went there. Or he was able to creep up on everybody as he went there, um, and that was a that was a run that was decided by one of the big three. That we'll we'll talk about those guys later. <laughs> Let, let's not bring those up. I I, I don't want to see a commentator's curse here. Now, what will we see from this Clefairy? Oh wait, nothing because double edge. We, we see nothing on Clefairy. I got yelled at. It's okay, Headstrong. I got yelled at for scamming everybody out of Metronome. <laughs> yeah, so that Clefairy does have Metronome, which will use any move at random, which can. In fact, my last run actually saw Horn Drill. Oh. I got crit Hyper Beam once. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've been level 26 on that fight. I've gotten guillotine, and it hit. Oh, that 30%. <laughs> yes, any genuine move. This is correct. And, uh, and Gavin does make a good point. Etiquette might just do a center heal in Celadon once he gets there. That's why he didn't bother reviving Krabby at this point in time. He might opt to be reviving it later. Headstrong does get her Jigglypuff here, which is actually going to be huge for that experience points for the Rhyhorn. And even then, I don't think he needs to worry about healing here because there is a heal pad in Tower. Right. It, I think it's just a matter of if he's wanting the Krabby to be getting the experience the whole way through the uh, uh, Rocket Hideout, especially with it almost... Or no, that's Headstrong. It's almost ready to evolve. Yeah. Headstrong <laughs> already getting, getting Machoke. <laughs> Headstrong already getting Machoke, and she'll get Kingler on her uh, on her next fight, is my guess. Because Headstrong did just get Puff. Which does put her at 54 plan. Which is really, really nice. You want to see the even plan? Um, my bet is she will forego. Oh, and gets the eradicate. Did for the eradicate? She did unmark Rattata, and will which... probably unmark Tenta, like the Tenta yeah, my, line. My guess is she'll probably unmark the Tenta line and probably Weezing and Boober. Not sure which, what her plan is going to be at this point in time. Um, she does have Ninetales uh, marked as one of her targets as well. So uh, could could be, just that could say be another one. Forgo Ninetales and Forgo. Forgo Ninetales, Boober, and uh, the Tenta lines. Or even just Forgo Pidgey and Ninetales. That too. We'll see what she opts to do. Uh, Etiquette does cut the bush here. He is going for the Radicate. Is my guess. Worth it when he sees that rat. Yeah. And who knows? He might get lucky and get that Aber to spawn. Sandy also going in for the fire. Ninny tails. Oh, sorry, sorry, Phoenix. Ninny tails. <laughs> and Sandy has nothing but Jigglies on his screen, and that makes me so happy. He doesn't need one, but he's got nothing but Jigglies on his screen. Bad time to be using a repel? Also, um, a lot of time to use it. Yeah, one one thing about Sandy's Pikachu is I checked the special attack uh, at level 30. Uh, it's 61, which is kind of low. Uh, which means that the helping hand range on Tower J&J &J is not very good. 
it's less than 50%. Ooh. Ada does pick up the Firestone, so he is planning on evolving his uh, Vulpix into Ninny Tails. Which he does have marked up, it's not... I, I, I kind of figured that. Ada definitely has a catch route of all time. Yeah, and, that, and I, I agree with his decision to opt for evolving the Vulpix instead of catching a just a one-off tentacool that's not going to evolve or, or catching king coughing and not evolving it um no what, you don't want to catch magmar <laughs> i mean i'm all for catching going for for boober or going for victory bell you know i would i would squeal with delight if he went for victory bell if it came down to it okay so here Edda's going to teach Glitzy Glow, which we haven't talked about. This is a 90 base power psychic move, which sets up light screen. Yeah, so it gives you a little bit of a little bit of offense and a little bit of defense, which uh, a lot of the stuff that we have coming up here, really, the light screen's not going to do much for, um, which is unfortunate, but that... Uh, that 90 base power psychic move with a lot of poison types coming up is very helpful. Extremely helpful. Plus, we now see setting for the nature here, which is another reason why we set the time to roll over, is when we set the nature, you can set the nature there with that trainer. She will guarantee the nature for every Pokemon you catch for the rest of the day. Because we already set the time to roll over past midnight, Everything we now catch from here on will be a modest nature, which will come into play later as a plus special attack minus attack. As we will be using a special attacker as our main in the back half of the run. Right, Sandy on the Hypno fight, we'll see what uh, they opt to do here. It looks like X attacking into Pikachu. Okay. Likely because Pika is already level 30 and the Zippy does not kill. Did not yeah, get the kill. Wow. It's not guaranteed for sure. That's uh, that's surprising guaranteed. that that's not a guaranteed range. Yeah, at, I have, uh, I, have the level level. I have the level 28 ranges here. Uh, it's guaranteed with 85 attack at 28, but level 30, that threshold is much lower. Headstrong is just kind of able to just really kind of truck through this uh, this hideout here with her double edge. Doesn't really have to worry about any extra menus for X attacks or anything like that. Just the occasional heal menu here and there as she goes. Yeah, 70 attack on the Pikachu. Next is one of the Problem. And it gets a really good fight. fight just going headbutt twice from the hypno. That's really handy because that thing can put you to sleep. So, and his attack stat must be high enough that it was a, a favorable range for go to go for that plus three or go for that three headbutts versus using that uh, that X attack turn one there. No, he did use X attack turn one. Oh, did he? Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought I, th I apologize. I thought you said that he used headbutt three times there. So I no, the, you got headbutt twice from the hypno. Oh, uh, okay. Hypno didn't put him to sleep or anything, which is really nice. The headstrong is past the Grimer that could be a problem. And uh, why is that Grimer possibly a problem there, Raz or, uh, uh, Razor? Uh. You mean iron one minimize? <laughs> Good old minimize. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I, I'd rather not bring up that move. Thank you. Yeah, so oh, we'll Pika, talk about it later. <laughs> on Pika, you'll see you can see a couple different strategies here. Depending, it kind of depends on which Nito you have. But for a lot of the time, you're just using Pikachu and just going plus two Thunderbolt. Um, if you have Rhyhorn. And Nido, if you have Nido Queen, you can do well. You don't. You can still do this. You can do the same thing. But you can also use Rhyhorn. Uh, the problem is Rhyhorn can be slower than Grimer. 
and uh, get minimized. I, I, I tried that strat once and got minimized, trolled, and I'm like, nope, I'm never doing that again. I think at that point you just switch to, to using Stomp. Because Stomp oh, will always hit minimize. Yeah. And Headstrong has yep. stood on the I... wheelie chair and gotten the card. This is my this is my daily disclaimer for this game. Do not stand on a wheelie chair. Yeah, no. Uh, it's not this safe. is not OSHA approved. But also, shout outs to Phoenix for helping me out through that run in race two. <laughs> Because I just kept going for it because I'd gotten minimized and kept missing and Phoenix is like, Stomp strats? I didn't realize Stomp actually always hit through minimize. Which would have saved me a bit of time. But yeah, I, 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 I would have yeah, gone completely but... south if I would have just kept going. It probably wouldn't kill, I don't think, but... No, it, it took three turns. I had to go plus two and just go for it, which is kind of a pain, but Headstrong I at least had an extra to, attack there. Headstrong is getting to the first of the kind of mid-game difficult fights here. Yep. Um, that uh, that J and J three, that uh, things can go sideways two. real quick or. J and J, yeah, J and J two. J and J three is just as bad, though. <laughs> Things can go. So very this is where we will probably though. see. I'm I'm guessing we're gonna see Rhyhorn strats. Yes, that's exactly. Yes, what we do. So we're gonna get the X attack into the Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn's gonna drill run into the Arbok. Hope that and it's at a good 25 enough here. This is does get the, range. the range. Easy. There we go. Really, really good here. Doesn't matter if Eevee gets hit, Eevee will survive. And then since it's poisoned, you can just... She will probably Glitzy Glow and yes, there's a Glitzy Glow. Go for the drill run and that's the two-turn fight. Really, really good fight there. Does not kill! Oh my god. There's your minus, minus special, attack. special yeah. attack does not that kill. Minus special attack comes in uh, comes in at the worst time. So I am surprised that she opted for the super potion instead of healing off the poison on this turn just to uh, prevent possible status lag on the next fight. But uh, but well, headstrong did manage to get anyway. through that with minimal issues. Yeah, There's she has the, to heal heal. the poison off no matter what anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, we'll see Sandy on doing a variation of the fight, this time using Nido King as the partner to the Ry Rhyhorn. Pretty much the same thing, except we can use Helping Hand. And does Oko the oh, Arbuck? Yeah, he did Arbuck. get the range. Yep, so we'll see Drill Run Helping Hand here. Which guarantees the range on the Weezing. Unless you're we'll a very if... bad attack. We'll see if Etiquette decides to do the Rhyhorn strats as well, or if he's going to go for the... Uh, nope, uh, the, does not nope, get it. Healthy. It's another three-turn from Sandy. Wow. That's unfortunate. So Nino King there can just outspeed the, <laughs> the Weezing and kill with poison. All three runners going for the going drill for run strats. Strat. I mean, that is neutral, so the minus special it, attack will not necessarily come into play here. Eevee is not paralyzed. Eevee which did not is get paralyzed. really, really good here. Let's see if did not get poisoned get either. Here. And there's the poison. Does get the two turn fight. Okay. Saves a turn over the other two runners there. So he is going to have to do a heal menu, though, because of that poison and EV being low HP. That's not uncommon anyway. Nope. You expect to heal after this fight. I think I've gotten... No, gotten does that not go for the heal! heal. Like he forgoes the heal entirely! Okay. Okay. Let's see what Sandy... Sandy should do... Yeah, Sandy's going to do a, a, an interesting strat that some people will call the Randall strat, where you headbutt into the Weezing on Archer uh, with the X special attack, and then Helping Hand Thunderbolt turn two, 
And as long as you don't have minus attack or minus special attack, it's a uh, one shot. He didn't even call in second controller. I thought he called it in. He might have called it in just as he was stepping into the thing, uh, into the kind of range for that cutscene. So it just didn't bring in that two C mm -hmm. in time, is my guess. Uh, yes, Etiquette does have Dead Crabby. He had a very bad Sophia fight. And uh, so he is currently running with a fainted Krabby and now a fainted Rhyhorn. Got the range on the or got that uh, wheezing out. And Headstrong already has turnarounds. That's that's not surprising with her level though. <laughs> no. Let's let's be honest. That's not no. surprising with her level. I mean, Usually, I, I might I, be I, one of the only ones to have seen turnarounds in Rock Tunnel. I uh, usually usually I get turnarounds somewhere between the Grimer Trainer and uh, and that first channeler there in yep. uh, Lavender Tower. So That's for those who don't know what turnarounds are, watch Headstrong's next fight. You are going to see the EV after the attack. Turn back and look at Headstrong just should, for a couple seconds. We should see that seconds. on Sandy's fight here on Rhyhorn. You might see it on Etiquette too. Mm, right. Uh, maybe not for Etiquette. Etiquette's pretty low level, but we should see it here on Sandy because Sandy's level thirty-one. You know, another way you can find turnarounds is by listening to some uh, Ario Speedwagon. Nope, didn't see it on Sandy, okay. So this is actually it. a newer version of the fight. Well, not necessarily massively new, but this is a version of the fight for Giovanni that the one and only Echi actually came up with. Um, we used to run a different fight entirely. For a while it was 2C, and then it went to 1C Graveler, and now we just go to X attack. Tank two like tank fake out turn one, which is favored, and then slash, and then we sizzly slide, which burns and halves the attack from Persian, allowing Etiquette. you to take another with unless you're minus defense. That is, Etiquette just risked the crit on that one. Holy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're guaranteed even with the crit. Uh, he mm. was he was not guaranteed to live even with the crit, crit at crit uh, the where he was at, it ignores the burn. Crit doesn't it ignore does. the burn, but the damage is still halved. Okay. So he uh, he he definitely definitely risked it risked it a little bit on that one because the crit, crit is would still have halved out. even with burn. Crit does not ignore the burn. Crit just yep. ignores the pluses to stats. Yep. And Headstrong did lure, by the way, before she flew to Lavender Tower. Um, I'm in the camp of no lure for no lure. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter usually. Uh, what about you, Iron? Only if I need Q uh, Cubone as well. And of course, in AOP, I'll probably do it. Well, even still, uh, again, only if I need Cubone. So, yeah. I, I, I never lure. And if I need Rhyhorn, like if I need Cubone, I'm probably just getting something else. Probably, yeah. Gonna say if I if I'm desperate enough that I'm needing Tower Cubone, I'm probably resetting that run at that point. Usually, <laughs> you're not wrong. And on AOP, I'm just waiting for the right Cubone anyway before I even leave Rock Tunnel. Sandy does have Growlithe as his follow mon now as well, instead of riding the uh, instead of riding the Rhyhorn Rhyhorn through here. Yeah. So the reason for that is this. For this J and J fight coming up, we can't really do Rhyhorn strats, so we're gonna be doing an older version of the J and J fight where you use Pikachu and set up an next special attack. Um, and Gra Ry Growlithe works out really well here because it's low enough level that it will get double, it will get double targeted. Although Pikachu will take one of the hits because the Growlithe will die the first hit, um, and really that just draws a hit away for the Pikachu. And we also uh, will be. It's, we also be, will be using it as a ride mod potentially later. So Sandy, after the fight, will 
uh, evolve the Growlithe into Arcanine, and we'll use that as a ride, and the Arcanine, because it's fainted, it will not level up on Cyclic Road. A nice little bonus. Headstrong did get her oh. Ghastly here. And Sandy also sees one. But Sandy's screen is now frozen. Sandy's. I was going to say, will... Sandy just froze for me here. Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. okay. Excellent job of getting the great Headstrong there. and Sandy with Rick, which is really good. Um, oh, and then yeah. you're just needing... Etta just needs it now. Uh... We saw a couple couple of different things here. We saw Headstrong switch to Ultras early, um, go for the Ghastly. Sandy stayed on Greats. I personally switched to oh, stay on the Greats uh, for the Ghastly. I don't know about you guys. Uh, depends on where I'm at in terms of my catches. If I'm if I desperately need to ensure that I have Ghastly, I'll switch to the Ultras at this point. Otherwise, I'll save the Ultras until I'm on uh, Route 17. Yeah, I guess also if you if say you got a really front loaded catch route where you get a lot of catches, say coming out of Mount Moon, like for example in my PB where I got twenty, um, I could maybe switch to ultras for the ghastly because yep. I only need to catch like two yep. things for the rest of the run from this point yep. or something. So yeah, it's, it's can nice when you have go those. ghastly here. It will just mean that he'll need to get tenta. It uh, it is nice to to have those runs though where you know. Your Route 17 catches is literally just Pony and like Doduo, and that's it. You're done for the rest of the run outside of Star. That's so nice, but that takes a really high catch count, and Sandy won't even have that here. Nope. Uh, in fact, Headstrong's actually pulled ahead of Sandy for uh, catch count. She pulled ahead of him there in uh, after Rock Tunnel. Etiquette is still looking for his ghastly. I don't see him standing around waiting for it, though. No. Um, no, he don't wait. He's clearly here in third place, and he's he just needs to just go. That uh, that that option that opt out of the rare char might come back might be coming back to bite him a little bit with uh, just with his catch count compared to the other two at this point. I would hope. Yeah, so on the J&J &J fight here, I guess Glitzy Glow at plus two is not usually going to kill that Urbok unless you're like, no. got busted special no, attack. No, unless you're really, really high special attack. So so for this fight for Eevee, the notes literally say do not get unlucky. Um, <laughs> because unless you are plus special attack with almost every special attack AV going, or every AV going into special attack, you almost have no chance of one-shotting the Arbok without a crit. Um, so it's pretty much turn one, X special, glitzy glow, turn two, bouncy bubble, super potion, and then turn three is when you finish off the wheezing with that, uh, that, bu uh, buzzy, or that glitzy glow and that second sp X special. Yep. Uh, yeah, so we'll see the peak uh, Very of rarely have I actually had an Eevee that is both fast enough to outspeed the Arbuck on J&J3 and guarantee the Oko. Etiquette, um... That's etiquette. Did not get unlucky. I got crit, which is unlucky. But he did not get unlucky in the sense that they doubled into the EV. I think EV would have died if they had doubled Ooh, crit into it. Or, oh, crit if they Sandy doubled into the bomb, EV, not a huge deal though. Dead, yes. They'll just super potion. They'll just super potion here. So yeah, similar fight here. Which we see Thunderbolt at plus two and Arbok uh, heal turn two because um, you all Pikachu always gets hit unless somehow your partner Pokemon gets Power of Love, which can happen if you have like Clefable as your partner uh, for the fight, for example. Uh, well, Sandy's going to level up here to 32. What's the special attack on this? 65. 65. So that, that's a better range than it was at 30, for sure. That is still about a 50% range. And is not going for it. It's just going to go oh, yep. just great T-Bolt. Oh, okay. That's the crit. Works. <laughs> crit mattered. Oh, and and Etta oh, yeah, did manage that. to get through without getting KO'd. Although his yeah, so EV they, is poisoned. So that so for that fight for the crit the crit will is effectively the same 
multiplayer as the helping hand, so it was still a ranged die to crit. <laughs> so. Yeah, crit, crit definitely mattered there. Yep. And will we get lucky with any shiny Snorlaxes today? <laughs> you mean like you had in our race? <laughs> I, I still am in shock from that. <laughs> never, I've never seen it before in any Let's Go speedrun by anybody, and yeah. <laughs> that was wild. And Headstrong, let's see if she has good gamer movement with a uh, 457 escape. <laughs> oh, wait, her name tag is over the timer, so we can't tell. <laughs> Tandy evolving. Growlithe here, and also has uh, still has Cubone, I think, to evolve in the party. And also Ghastly, of course. Yes. So if has you guys are in... So has Cubone to Evo. So, so if you guys are in Etiquette's shoes, and you see like what Headstrong saw there with Doduo or Doduo and Pidgey in the grass above, do you cut that bush and go up there and grab them real quick, or do you hope that you see them again on Route 17? I absolutely grab them. That's, a, that's an interesting question. I have not cut that bush in a while. But yeah, it would probably have to be both two things that you need there. If both are there, then I grab them. If only one is, then I don't. Headstrong conserving Headstrong. ultras here, going for the double grade on Pidgey. Yeah, which is which is smart. I think it's like an 88 to 90% chance to, to catch with 2C excellent on the uh, Pidgey there. Yeah, it's really likely. Etiquette did get status lag. A pony. Uh, Pidgey's actually guaranteed. Well, guaranteed with an asterisk, of course, because <laughs> nothing's guaranteed. <laughs> with the double grades. Uh, so you'll notice this trainer's pass here. They're literally looking right at that. So in this game, the trainer vision is literally a laser line. And straight in front of them, it's... We can dodge a lot, and you will find a number of different trainer skips, which we've already skipped several. And just hugging that fence allows you to completely dodge that trainer's vision, oddly enough. Etiquette going double great on Doduo. Um, and there's also... a pony for Headstrong. Really, really good. The only thing left here on her route is literally Star. just Psyduck. Star and uh, Psyduck on Route 17. Have, she does have tentacles. She does have coughing marked. Mm -hmm. Headstrong's As also going to be evolving. Headstrong is also evolving to Pidgey all the way to Pidgeot. At least yes, two. true. So she's it's currently playing 52, for 52. So it, if she sees Psyduck, she grabs it. If she doesn't, then she gets both Tenta and Coughing. Otherwise, she can forego one of them. Yep, which Tenta is a 30% spawn on the uh, on the next route that we go to, and Coughing is, I think, like a 40% in uh, Mansion. We saw also double greats for Etiquette on Ponyta, as well as, or Doduo, and then Sandy on Ponyta. They're, those are not guaranteed catches, so 93% for Doduo. It should be very similar to Ponyta. And it has both and Psyduck Duck. and Doduo, which is really, really good. Ponyta has a little bit less, but around 90%. And does and see Sandy it. got the duck. Sandy just get not the using Ultra Balls, I guess. <laughs> Etiquette has a lot of catches that he needs to get here, un un unfortunately for him. Um, it do does look like he is going to be getting Marowak here on the... Uh, nope, never mind. I misread. So, that shows that I was not paying attention when it evolved. No Psyduck. Okay, so we are going to see both Tenta and Coughing from 
headstrong. And Edda did get Pony. He just needs that Pidgey to spawn now. And that puts Headstrong's clan at 50. Attack cycle for etiquette on the pony. Looks like Sandy's done on cycling road. Etiquette's gonna Sandy have doesn't have Do Duo at all. That's fine. Not a huge deal. I was gonna say you can just I use him at 49 point. He may need to go for Magma here. And does not have rat. I mean Rattad is common enough in mansion that he can get it in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'd imagine I it's mean, probably gonna be Magmar with rat. We, we could get or... lucky. We could get lucky and see a Vioplume catch. Yes, I was I'm just, just I was just, just saying say it's an option. <laughs> <laughs> we could get a Vileplume, we could get Tangelina Jolie. Tangelina? <laughs> Yes, thank you, Phoenix Day. You know, they can they can they can get a lot of there's a lot of options available. There's a lot of options. They haven't marked anything. So we will see. Oh, look at that. Look at that bad special attack on that start. Oh, wait. <laughs> you know, I make that mistake one time. One time. <laughs> Teapot moment. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Headstrong hunting for a couple things here. See what she sees. Uh oh, we had a weeping bell on her screen, but no uh no victory bell sad. We also and uh, no star. Race, Nothing spawning race, here. In the last race we had Head Bob run into a Starmie and had to wait a little bit for Star You. <laughs> So Edda has everything and he's out. And Headstrong has he her just tent. Does up. not have Pidgey. That is the only thing he does not have. Sandy. Headstrong did get good tentacool with a uh, quick attack instead of moving side to side. But does not get the excellent. Sandy? Still gets in though. Sandy needs tentacool. I'm surprised they're not going for it. So I guess it's too far away at this point. I was going to say, at this point, Sandy needs to almost mitigate the amount of move movement that he does, or that they do, to get the right, get all their pokes. There's uh, their star. Oh, nope, Tenta. Never mind. That's, I was going to say, that's their Tenta, that's their star. Oh, unlucky. Hey, okay, that's a Decent quick attack. Ooh, and nice really oh, good yeah, throw. throw. Holy, that's a god. That's a gamer throw right there. Nicely done, Sandy. Both runners that are on this route so far have not seen a star. There's the oh. star. First star for Headstrong. She does have two, and that is and it's a 1034. As we all know, CP is a scam. All right, good, uh, good cycle there on the star. Now, Etiquette is caught up with these guys to uh, start his water catches. And we'll look here to see if he sees a Pidgey. Sandy's gonna. He does here. see a Pidgey. He's going for it he here. He's a Pidgey. Will he Tangelina. go for the Tangelina Jolie as well? No. Oh. Sandy Boomer. heard something. Oh no! Thought they heard something. Well, actually, it may not be the worst idea here because this is not gonna be. Unless you get really like this is just too late to get. Pidgeot. I was going to say, he's at 49 planned. He'd need to pick up a ca extra candy to evolve Pidgeotto into Pidgeot, or has to catch uh, Boober or uh, Tangelina Jolie. 
Can Pidgey get there from here? No. Start Pidgeot? Okay. No. I thought it could. I know if you get on Cycling Road, it can. It's the same. It should be this. Is it higher level here? It's a, it's a higher level. Oh, okay. This is only a level 37. 1039 for Sandy, according to chat. Oh, I didn't see the. Uh, I didn't see Big the oof. Yeah, the only way that Pidgey 46, will fall 81, is 81, 91. Not good special attack, it's good speed. The uh, the only time you are, you if you catch a Pidgey on this route, the only time that Pidgey will be fully evolved to Pidgeot is if you get a uh, Wumbo size in your, or, or get a glowing Magmar as one of your catches. Okay. So Sandy now catching Grimer and Ooh, does have a rat on their again. screen. I'd like to know that catch that catch rate. Headstrong is getting all of her pre-menu stuff done before battling Ted. And she did drop a lure, it looks like. Yeah, it's 65% on the... That cool. does oh, get her the coughings to spawn. So right after this, she will grab a coughing and she will be good to go. Predicate. So below, it looks like below average for everybody. Predicate has the highest yep. CP. But well, all of them are within eight of each other. Oh, Etiquette with another breakout. Really Etiquette's just the breakouts have been the theme of Etiquette's run uh, today. Unfortunately, I think he's had the, the been most on a run. Everybody. All right, we'll see Sandy. Uh, Sandy, oh Sandy, getting Rattata there. We don't know if we, don't know if we caught that. Very nice. Um, let's see the Sandy stats. A little bit better special Whoa. attack. Speed looks fine though. Solid speed. It's not. Te it's decent. Special attack. It's not great. It's runnable. It's okay. It's fine. It's <laughs> it's, it's it's runnable. You know, right. it's not the worst star that we've seen in this in this. Uh, oh gosh! In no. this tournament. For that CP. Uh, this is okay. <laughs> oh, there's a star yeah. me on screen for etiquette. <laughs> Etika gets the one percent star me to show up. That's the second star me we've seen today. We had Bob saw one earlier. Uh, people might be wondering why don't we catch Starmie? Well, Starmie does not come with Psychic when you catch it, so you'd have to go to the Mr. Psychic and Saffron to teach it Psychic. It also uh, doesn't have Hydro Pump as well. Oh, which, that's, I mean, uh, yeah. you can get around that. That's not yeah, hard. Yeah, you can, but it's yeah, not not great. <laughs> it's it's not easy. Going double greats. Going for double greats, which means the etiquette is planning to go for Magmar. He might be out of ultras. No, he switched from ultras to greats. Oh, he might have one ultra left then, because I think he had. It does he... look like he's going magmar strat. Okay. Magmar, magmar, double ultra, magmar, excellent throw is like an eighty-eight percent chance. It's the same as a, a rapidash is. So he is hoping for the boober to show up. So it's just Psyduck following along. I mean, who wouldn't want a Psyduck following along? Sandy now getting oh, there. Sandy Magmar. Like Magmar. Double Ultras, I think, with Silver Eyes. Well, certainly, we'll see that here. Yep. Okay, that's favorable. Not, I don't think it's guaranteed, though. I think Etiquette's backup plan in the event that he does not get yeah. Magmar to spawn before he leaves would be to grab, pick up that extra rare candy in the mansion to be able yeah. to evolve Pidgeotto into Pidgeot after uh, Sabrina. Now here's the question, guys. Sandy does not have Doduo, but they have Magmar. So will we see Magmar strats on blue? Could be interesting. Add it with a slower star, but better special it's attack. It's a okay. decent special attack. This I, is I'd not sacrifice. going to be fast enough. 
I'd sacrifice. This will speed not for... be fast enough on Rapidash. It will not outspeed Rapidash. As long as he doesn't get knocked into quick attack range for the uh, for the Nine Tails, he should be okay. It probably won't, Phoenix, unless he gets really lucky and gets a lot of speed AVs. Wait, if anyone's wondering, that Magmar catch for Sandy is an 86% catch. It's not bad. I can still troll, <laughs> unfortunately. But very nice pickup for Sandy. Oh, there's a buck. Buck, uh, when it when you run into it, it takes up the entire screen. Headstrong starting at Blaine. We'll see if she gets a good fight here. Okay, gets there's confused. a standard confuser. Right? Yeah. Oh, Sandy setting out haunt, keeping out Haunter for this fight. Interesting. They did say they're testing new stuff in chat, so. Okay. Electro targeted to be Haunter. Rip Haunter. Haunter's already a ghost, so. He's <laughs> reached a new level of ghostliness. Oh, that's there, <laughs> <laughs> That was risky. Does not go for boat, like go for the bed heel either. And opted for no rare candy. You, you don't need that candy, though, do you? Uh, he's you, going. He's, he's only going got forty nine planned. No, no he's, he got he's going ditto. For a ditto instead. He got, he got ditto. Ditto. <laughs> There's like five percent here, right? Oh. Yes. No, well, no, it's ten percent here. Oh, it's ten. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. ten percent. Oh, he's oh, excellent, excellent on the gamer throw. I'm surprised he didn't go double ultras. This is. Uh... He, he's on his last oh. ultra. No. Oh gosh. Last one. Oh no 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 no. And I, I don't blame you one bit. <laughs> oh. Ditto is not a fun time. Okay, there we go. I'm curious what the calcs are on that. Uh... Ditto. Catch. That was a nice, right? I guess no res. Nice, no revs, double points. 20, 20, 23.48%. Oh. I mean, he got it. So in you're four saying balls, there's so. a chance. <laughs> <laughs> he got it statistically in four. So, so for those who don't know, Headstrong is. Very, very much on three zero zero pace right now. I, I will maybe three zero one. I will say I think Sandy is close enough, especially when you consider the fact that they are one poke ahead of Headstrong. Um, I do think Headstrong really needs to be considering riskier strats versus safer strats for uh, for E four. Um, Sandy definitely has to go for risky strats to have a chance. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's kind of what heads, might be going through Headstrong's mind at this point. Just kind of if she's been listening or if she's got like the stream pulled up on the side to see how close Sandy is to kind of start thinking about what direction she wants to go for the uh, for the end game here.
Ooh, okay, Sandy so. not getting confused, right? Good. That's a um, really good start. Yeah, there's still a little ways to go before E4. There's a couple fights like Archer that are, yeah. could, uh, could change things up a things, bit. But... Things can change very quickly, and you know, even 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 though he's furthest behind, Etiquette still has a very good chance in this run, just because there are some big equalizer fights co uh, coming up for uh, for everybody. Etta did just say if things don't get better through Archer, he's just gonna go eat Indiana. Yeah, note also Etta gets like decently behind in catches as well. So yeah. Which we'll hopefully we'll see things turn. We will we love to see all three racers uh, at the end of the run, so. Wait, Sandy still has Yeah, Sandy now at 48 pokes. Uh -huh. Sandy has no more evos left. Yeah, so Sandy and Headstrong realistically are probably at like the same pace that, right now. That Magmar was huge. It got all the evos yeah. pretty quickly. We'll see after like Giovanni about where they're at, but I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Headstrong and Sandy within within a minute of each other at this point. Oh, definitely within a minute of each other. I still think Headstrong's slightly ahead, but I, not I, by a lot. I agree, and I don't think she's far enough ahead to be able to do safe strats if Sandy doesn't do safe strats. Uh, I would tend to agree with that. Uh, I mean, she's in Erica's gym now. Sandy still hasn't gotten to Vermillion, so I think there's a little bit of a cushion still, but yeah, the catch count yeah. kind of equalizes so, things. We'll, we'll see a bit more, I guess, once we get through. Um, like once we get past Elf, we'll have our best It is about three idea. minutes. Point split is about three minutes from the moment you finish. Well, sorry, surges. So from the moment you finish blind to surge, is going the early shop. One early going shop. Vermilion okay. shop. Okay. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. I think Sandy doesn't have enough kills. Is more than likely the case here. That would be my guess. Um, they did use quite a few of them through uh, Rock a Hideout. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we're in the area where it is notoriously for getting copyright on YouTube. It's not a huge deal. The videos are still fine, but it's actually, I've noticed that it's the fight theme specifically, not the gym theme. That's what I've noticed in my runs. So mm -hmm. let's have a good discussion during the fight here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I normally get it like on the videos that I've up uploaded. I usually get it in Misty's gym for whatever reason. Yeah, I've seen it in a few places, but I've noticed fight the Blaine fight and the Erica fight are the main ones. It is a s'more a sandwich? Yes. Yes. Uh, it, it's this it's a really cookie. Sandwich. I will say it's, it's a cookie psychic. sandwich, but okay. it's a sandwich. Now what gets really interesting Perfect. is when you have this fight on AOP and you're taking Dodrio. Oh yeah, that's an interesting fight. So yeah, so for that fight you use Dodrio, you have to set up a sword stance and hope you don't get put to sleep by the Tangela. So it's kind of similar to the the, the fight for on Blaine where you're hoping not to get confused. The really interesting one is when you're actually taking Dodrio and taking on Surge. Jump kick! Oh, oh yeah. You hit. <laughs> I think I've missed jump kick once ever in that gym. Oh gosh, must be news. I've missed a bunch. Is an open faced sandwich a pizza? No. No. No, but a calzone is a sandwich. <laughs> I will die on that hill, by the way. Pizza is like a very specific thing. But Thank you, Phoenix. Is a pop tart a ravioli? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I can see where you're coming from, Sai, but yeah, I don't know about that. It's, oh god, there's so all these questions. It's a burrito? <laughs> Cereal is a cold soup, yes. 
That's another hill I will die on. Cereal is a cold soup. <laughs> it's sweep. <laughs> nice typo. Good old sweep. Coffee, Coffee is, is bean broth. That's not <laughs> wrong. Now that now that Headstrong is here, it's time for me to get my aluminum foil hat on. I warned these guys I was going to be doing this. Oh so, no. Headstrong's about to be walking into Selfco, and we're about to meet the lookout for rocket hideout. Or the, the lookout for rocket in here. This receptionist lady right here. Alright? She's not locked away like every other employee in Selfco. She's able to be freely moving around. She's looking out for any strong trainers that come in. She sees Blue. She knows who Blue is. And, you know, she notifies everybody else that there are strong trainers here. That's why we see Archer on floor five talking to the person with the card key to prevent them from losing it. Interesting. So she is secretly a rocket employee. She was standing up, but now she just casually sits down and she's like, okay, I'll just watch right? this fight. Right? She's just chilling. She's just chilling. Clearly, she's, she's not walking like, like everybody villain. else. So that's my that's my aluminum hat moment for the uh, for the stream that uh, the receptionist lady there is Team Rocket. Okay, we see Fire Blast on Headstrong side. So I guess and does hit. Trio. She did hit. Which is an 85%, slightly better than Hydro Pump. Yeah, she did get Dodrio, but she's obviously opted to go for Rapid Ash instead. That's Pacho, I guess. Ariana from Marcos. Here he has. It's a hell of a transformation from, uh, from Nugget Bridge to the receptionist at Silphco. Are the Gen 2 legendaries cats or dogs? They're cats. They are cats. This they is cat kids. chat. So we, we are cats. the cat. We are cat <laughs> commentators. They are closer to cat. Oh, well, they're they're closer to cats. <laughs> it's it's a lion for Entei, a leopard for Suicune, and a saber tooth tiger for Raikou. Suicune. Suicune. I'll say, I'll say Suicune, right? That one doesn't sound like it's right, but it's right. Sweet Coon, yeah. Sweet Coon gets the pass. They're hamsters, yes. So, Headstrong here on the worst fight in this entire run. Yes, the first of the three great equalizers. That's my toe. <laughs> Sorry, my cat. First off, it's toe. really slow because double battles are painful. Second, Everything in here, aside from the muck, has a super effective move against your Starmie. Thankfully, you get the boom turn one, but also got protect, so not terrible. Yeah, boom protect, so we're probably going to be looking a five turn fight here. That's the best start you can expect with a protect turn one. Etiquette's about to start Erica. Sandy is finishing up with Surge. And Sandy has done their shop already and again has their three evolutions that Headstrong still needs to get. Which she'll probably get two of them after this fight here. She did just get the Pidgeotto bill level, so. Yep, she still got Coughing to evolve and Tentacool. Both of those should evolve after this fight here. And then Pidgeot will probably evolve after. There's a bone in the rat. Uh, Sabrina. Will this turn into a four turn fight? If we get Bone Marine, this is a four turn fight. You're expecting Trace to be useful. The only rival that's worse than Trace is Hop. I don't disagree, but. <laughs> There's the Tentacruel. And does get the Bone Meringue! Four wow. turn fight from Headstrong. She got useful rival. Stuff. It's been a hot minute since I've seen that. So we do have Expedefs from Sandy. That's not surprising. 
I was gonna say, Sandy's. I think in a point he has to. Oh, Sandy's bay. reviving Haunter here. Interesting. That was. That's interesting. Are we gonna see Shadow Ball? Are we seeing? <laughs> we're seeing Shadow Ball strats for Exeggutor. This should be interesting. I was expecting. I was expecting the Haunter. It Haunter does have really, really good special attack. But it's only level thirty-three. It's, so I'm a little bit concerned. I was expecting Muck actually, because Muck's in slot three. <laughs> oh, etiquette and this is gonna be interesting. very close to each other now. So fun fact. Hunter has a higher base special attack than Stormy. That's not surprising. Hunter's just frail as heck. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, so All right Headstrong's gonna... got down to her last evolution, and she's two fights ahead of Sandy. Yeah, Headstrong is definitely ahead. Uh, I do think I do think she's far enough ahead. She could run safety strats. Um, Etiquette and Sandy are both on blue now. Yeah, Sandy has a bit so of a lead this, because of the, the so catch count. This, but... Yep. It is not massively far behind. And should anything go terribly wrong from Sandy, Etta can very much come into second here. I was gonna say I'm I'm looking at my race from this round here where. Uh, you know, I got got by Naomi after uh, Uzarian got got by uh, uh, the Shadow oh. Ball does kill. <laughs> Let's go. I'm curious what the range is on that now. It's got to be a, fa a favorable or, or guaranteed yeah. range or else you wouldn't go for it ever. Yeah, Sandy's going to go the X special attack route on the Scald. The special attack was not amazing. Well, it wouldn't have been enough to, to Oko. You can go for Hydro Pump, but... And we see Etiquette going Rapid Ash, so nobody using Godria, which is the most common. It does look like it is a Lord Hunter, yes. Oh, yes, buddy. Sandy Sandy, and Headstrong both lured. Etiquette did not for oh. a tower. Oh, no, it is not Lord. No. Oh. Just gained, it gained That's just a really good... So we just got, got high level... High level so Haunter, nice. No, no, what happened is uh, Sandy caught Magmar. Oh, true, true, true. That's right. Oh, okay, so Good Sandy has Magmar. actually routed this, okay? So. <laughs> so. Oh, 30 is needed. 28 for Shadow Ball. I guess Sandy might have actually routed this. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll yeah Modest a plus a really high special attack. And really good speed. Uh, but yeah, this this run is not over for any of these runners yet. <laughs> You're not um, wrong, Amber. <laughs> okay, self destruct with no protect for Sandy. Just totally so that's Sandy a has a perfect chance. turn one. Sandy has a chance for optimal Archer two fight. Now I'm also curious with Haunter still in slot two, how J and J is gonna go. I mean, does Weezing still have Dark Pulse at that point? Might. Arbok might have... Arbok definitely has, like, Crunch, I think. So well, I... Starmie will outspeed the Arbok. There's the Protect and... Well, no Protect and... Boom, turn one. Etiquette got optimal Etiquette got the perfect start as well. as well. Sandy's gonna have to heal here. I'm wondering if Sandy's going to keep the Sandy has a four turn spot. fight. No. But Sandy keeping Haunter in slot two could be to bait a instead of having Thunderbolt into the Starmie, getting uh, baiting a Dark Pulse into Haunter, so then Starmie doesn't take damage and doesn't have to waste a, a tur healing turn. Here's here's what I think might happen. He, Sandy might target the Weezing. And the Arbok will crunch the Haunter. That could be. 
Because I don't know if that Weezing has Dark Pulse. Let me actually check. There's this cool place called Bulbapedia. Good fight from Etta. Really good fight from Etta. Seven. Oh god, what floor are you on? Eleven? The game heard Etta say that he was gonna, if it was a bad part. The Weezing does, does have Dark Pulse. But the Airbok also has Crunch, so we could see either option. I would sooner say, I don't know, because it'll be it'll be guaranteed for either one of them. If anything, I expect Garbok will do more damage with Crunch to Haunter, but I think either way, um, it dies. It's got a bit better special defense than defense Haunter, and so... Headstrong picking up her Rare Candy and her Larpus. I've and, never been uh, more interested to see a, J &J, a Sylph J&J fight than right now. We are all invested in seeing With these Haunter? J, &J. <laughs> I think that I think Amber is implying, Sandy, that you are uh, you are well prepared for your runs. Yeah, Sandy is a legend. Interesting routing ideas, which work well, and you wouldn't really think they're kind of outside the box. Okay, so Sandy targeting the targeting the Arbok. I think a large part of this actually came from having done a Hunter all. Maybe. Sandy has done a Haunter ult. Okay, still gets the target of T-Bolt there on uh, Starmie, unfortunately. Wait, has Sandy done it? It might have been Keith. I was say, I know you roped me into one one time. Yes, I, I know shiny, I did. I got Shiny Ghastly as soon as I <laughs> entered tower. Look, it's a good run! It's a good ult main! So... You all know that that we were, you know, the meme kings for for my run or the last or this this current round. I really debated on doing a baton pass run. <laughs> baton pass is actually a good run. If I could, if I had had a time that was sub three ten, I probably would have. As uh, Headstrong is now done with her final shop, she is entering into Sabrina's gym, where that gym requirement is to have a Pokemon yep. level 45 or higher, which is interesting because there's not a single Pokemon over level 45 in this entire gym. Including Headstrong Sabrina. is significantly ahead here. Good flinch for etiquette on J&J. &J. On the Weezing. I think it's only uh, about what a minute minute behind Sandy at this point, factoring in all the Evos. Probably about a two minute lead, well, two and a half minute lead for Sandy on Etiquette here at least. Oh, no, it's actually more than that. It's already a four minute, almost a four minute lead. Well, each Evo is like 40 seconds. And then there's about a minute for the fight. So, I don't know. so it is a four minute lead for Headstrong at the moment. Oh, yeah, Headstrong. I was, I was talking about Sandy over at the kid. Yeah. yeah, no, for Sandy over at a... It's about three. Roughly. Yeah, Headstrong can absolutely go for safe strats here and be fine. She's got... There's still two two more of the uh, big three coming up here for, uh, for all three of these runners. Which, the big three, for those of you that are, are curious why we keep referring to them that way, they are the three runners that are most likely to delay you in your race and can have actually cost headstrong the win the first time these three raced against each other uh the big three are of course archer two which all three of our 
runners got through with no problem. Uh, Caden in uh, Koga's gym, the only uh, trainer that we have to battle outside of Koga himself. We, we then, don't talk about him. Uh, Caden has a muck to <laughs> minimize that can just spam minimize and just you know, have get, cause you to have a very bad day. Listen, um, I'm not salty about that at all. And then the last one is Caroline on Victory Road with or with her Jinx that knows Blizzard and Lovely Kiss and can just cause ha havoc by freezing you, putting you to sleep, and just all, overall shenanigans. I mean, if it freezes, it's not a big deal. Just go to plus four and scald. Because it's called on Dawes. I, I just saw Sandy run up the left hand side of Saffron and I'm like, he forgot to do a stop. <laughs> well, that Naomi's not part of this forgot. victory. You're not wrong, Ember. Naomi's not bad if you don't get unlucky, like getting sucker punched. Wait, that thing has sucker punch? <laughs> Yes, it does. Yep. It knocked me out this week. <laughs> Wait, Sandy entering. Yes, yeah, Sandy is they them. Saffron's gym. Yep. Uh, Sandy, in their notes, they have an interesting strategy for Sabrina, which uses 2C with Tentacruel, and Tentacruel KOs the. is your attacker, pretty much. Other than on the uh, slow burrow. I guess really? depending on what Pokemon comes out in second. But it's uh, it's a little bit slower. It's actually not that much slower. Um, you skip light screen, but then you also have to deal with the 2C stuff, so when I did that when I did that strat in a run, I was I only lost a second to the splits I was comparing to. But then I also had to then I then I had to desummon the second controller after the fight, so it's like three seconds or so. It looks like is he setting up? Or are they setting up for it? Nope, no, they are not. Edda not does right. get the extra end. Edda's like, I'm just going full bore one C here because I have to. Oh, Sandy can't candy. Candy. Interesting. I'm curious though, because that's going to mess up your experience routing for the rest of the run. Pretty much, you're you're going to be a lower level for. No, you'll be a higher level. Because instead of candying after Sabrina, you're candying before, so you're getting all the, the Sabrina. Right, but you stuff. normally gain a level when you battle Sabrina. But Sandy already gained that level. Okay. Level Meanwhile, level Headstrong oh, that's the right. they got start the, to Caden. Got it. They so they got the they got the, uh, the enough experience from the uh, the Magmar catch. Yeah, I, I don't know when they. Candy their star though. I feel like it was after the bag one. No, you do not pick them up. Are they just spamming Scald? Did they set up at all? What is this fight, Sandy? I think they're doing the normal strat. It's a normal fight. But Headstrong only got one extra protect on Caden, so really solid. Sandy's got got the juice going on there. I think it's still right there. Etta also has 50 planned right now, so like... 2702 at the end of Sabrina for Sandy. We will see what Edda's time is. Probably going to be roughly a minute and a half behind. Maybe two minutes. Normal start, protect, and then just go. So, headstrong, nothing went terribly wrong here. The downside to this gym is everything has protect, so you can lose turns to... Well, 
Just getting unlucky. <laughs> no protect on the Venom was really nice. And no protect on the Golbat. Okay. Is this just going to be one extra protect and that's it? I'm, I'm very surprised if that's the case just because typically wow. you'll have... Wow. Typically, you need to have Explosion turn one against Koga to have a, a fight with no protects. Really good Koga fight. Could not have asked for anything better there. That Really, really good. Yep. Um, we saw Headstrong use Psychic on the Weezing and the yep. Venom off because of the low special attack. I think Sandy also had low special attack. And then it was Etiquette that had low speed. If I recall correctly. So Etiquette might be able to scald those two mons. Headstrong doing late teeth. The way it should be done. I always do early teeth. I think it's I think it's only like a, a half a second or a one second difference between early teeth and late teeth. Where's the time save come from? Uh, with early or with late teeth, you have to come down and then you have to swing back around. Whereas with early teeth, you can just angle and just go up into the left. Oh, you hop the ledge for early teeth then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you can come straight down. That's true. Oh, I didn't see Sandy's muck, but it looked fine. Yeah, Sandy's muck was fine. Oh, Sandy going for Psychic on Beedrill, interesting. Oh, wait, okay. <laughs> Switch to Skull to protect. <laughs> uh, one thing you'll see with Sandy here also, um, with a little, another side effect, which we'll get to, I guess, after the the, the Koga fight, is with the, the late, with the Vermilion Shop, is Sandy will have Super Repels instead of Max Repels, so... It's some weird repel timings. It's never fun, especially if they happen at the worst time when you're trying to get past nope. the uh, trainer. Meanwhile, Edda goes into Caden. Caden has been kind the first two, first two runners. And Headstrong is now learning about Mega Evolution. Not that we ever use it in this run. It's a sub-230 Koga for a Headstrong. That's really good. And, uh, Etta got a really Headstrong good Gaiden turn flying. one. Etiquette with a really good start. Like, that's... San Sandy also getting a good start on Koga yep. as well. Everyone yep. got Protect from the Beedrill. There's a protect from this, Venomoth. This is still anyone's race at this point. Headstrong does have a slight lead at this point in time. However, things can things can happen over the next couple of fights. They absolutely so this this really is anybody's race still. Although I fully suspect Headstrong will just run safe strats I'm, from here. I'm fully expecting Headstrong to run safe strats at this point. I think she has a large enough lead over Sandy yeah. Etiquette that she can do that without fear of them catching up to her. Um, really, it's a fight between Etiquette and Sandy for second place. Which is... I, I, I'm blown away that, you know, all three of these runners, sub-230, have started pretty much Cobra. Like that is that is incredible timing. Even for, with for a, a race bad situation. run from Etta. Yeah. All things considered. <laughs> Alright, so this Andy is turn over the teeth. There's a protect from Venomoth, that's unfortunate. This is where you'll you'll just lose time simply to getting more protects. I'm fully expecting headstrong. Yep, there's the yep. two C for 
Samuel. And does not get ratioed. Sandy's doing their uh, elixir menu. Sandy just went to Pallet Town. Oh gosh. Edda just made up six seconds on that gym. <laughs> and Sandy's just going to run to Vermilion Breeding because it is faster to do so, but... Edda do does still need to get the, the teeth. Um, he did not grab early teeth. Yep. So for those who don't know, right now Sandy is about a minute 20 ahead of Edda. And roughly about three minutes and 40 seconds or so for Headstrong over Sandy. Sandy is significantly ahead here. Not far enough ahead, though, to to rely on safety, safety strats. It, far safety enough strat ahead that safe strats will guarantee a win. Will they guarantee Barring a win? anything this point? going completely haywire, safe strats will guarantee a win. If, if, yeah, she's, I'm, if, I'm she's up by three, if she's up by three minutes, then yeah, safe strats will do it. Yeah, for, for headstrong, yeah, safety strats. I was I was referring no, to... No, for uh, Sandy, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, headstrong Headstrong is can do safety strats here on out and be perfectly fine. Sandy could opt to safe strat the Geogym, but maybe and then see from there. That's, a, that's an option. Mm -hmm. hey, I'm I'm so used to things going sideways in my runs that <laughs> <laughs> even safety strats aren't safe. You're like safety strats. What are those? Hey, Mist. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome on in, raiders. For those of you that are new here and are curious as to what's going on, we are in the middle of our uh, Let's Go Pokemon uh, Pikachu and Eevee. Uh, speed run tournament. Uh, we are currently in the third round. This is our uh, third matchup of this round uh, with really three elite speed runners in this category. Uh, any percent, no mount skips. Uh, right now, we are on the last gym, kind of wrapping up the run here within the, really the next 30, 30 minutes or so. We'll, uh, we'll be fully wrapped up. So thank you for the raid. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. And uh, myself and my other commentators, Iron and Razor, be more than happy to, to help answer those for you. So 124 special attack for Headstrong right now. Oh. <laughs> that is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. That is going to be a scary range it, against plants. It's a bit spooky. I, I, I'm i not going to lie. I would be very surprised if we don't see oh, Lapras Strat. Sandy is going or, to uh, see here for Samuel. As I expected. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Sandy is a decent ways behind Headstrong. So it will be difficult to catch her. However, um, has enough of a lead on etiquette that for now they can go for uh, this two controller strat, which means you don't have to hit that 80% Hydro Pump on this Nitto King. Come on, full send. <laughs> <laughs> that is That has been my motto for this tournament, full send. Yeah, for my second round race, I one seed the gym, and then once my unfortunate my competitor unfortunately died in the gym i had to uh i i ended up going to save the rest of the way mm. so we should our runners should be kind of keeping an eye on where everybody else is in order to kind of gauge what strides they want to do uh, what is headstrong's pb uh she's sub three mm. she's in the sub three club is she i think she just has a no she's new. no i don't think so i thought she was like high 259 give me a no she's not gotten a sub three give me a moment and i will double check but, uh, i'm pretty sure it's a 300 10. maybe a low 301 but low 301, this is 31110 31110 okay i thought she was sub three she's on pb pace 
She could PB here. We appreciate a good good PB. She's absolutely flying right now. What's Sandy? Sandy also has a 301, you. doesn't it? Don't they? No, Sandy has a 304. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or maybe a 303? I'm not sure. SRC is a 304, because I just uh, just bought them with my run last night. According to SRC, they may, have, they may have not uploaded another run. We'll see. But Sandy is definitely on PvP as well. Mm-hmm. Etiquette is slowly making up ground on Sandy here. Does have to go for the riskier strats of 1C with the X defend. See how much time splits these two here? Uh, Headstrong is about 30 seconds behind PB entering this uh, badge check. So she had a 238.43 entering that uh, gatehouse, and she had about a 239.14 in this in, in this race. So and uh, I believe Headstrong did one C strats for the end game. Yeah. Uh, Look at this through for Geo. Champ, she, for, actually not no, Sand she did do two C. Yep. That is cleanly through. Good stuff. Uh, etiquette will probably have to heal before rival, though. But it will have to heal. Yes, he is definitely in quick attack range. Sandy picking up a revive. Interesting. I didn't even know that was a revive. Yeah. There's a hyper potion in there too, somewhere as well, if I remember right. And now Headstrong is to Naomi. Now, I'm not expecting any runners to 1C Naomi. Um, none of them, frankly, have a special attack high enough to go for that uh, that 1C fight. Well, what you do is you scald turn one. Etiquette might have enough, but... What you do is you scald turn one. Um, if you get the burn, you're clean, then you can X back. If you do not, then you summon 2C and go... Yeah, I'd rather just call in 2C at the very beginning to, to be safe. Granted, I also get a play Sucker Punch. <laughs> I know this one from Matchy. It's one of those moves. You don't know that Kangaskhan has Sucker Punch until it uses it against you. And Headstrong did not get the range. And did not get the Sucker Punch. safely through. And look at this Kanga range. Okay. Yeah, Kanga, you're... I look at it as you're safe for Hydro Pump at 130. I think it's 132 is the 12 out of 16 range. Uh, let me double check. It is... But for a 10 out of 16 the the tw the 75 percent 12 out of 16 uh 12 out of 16 is 128 128 yeah that's my threshold for where i look at doing one c on naomi 134 is guaranteed yeah yes for the haunter phoenix Okay. There is the outspeed, but gets her slash. Etiquette has a guaranteed Oko with Hydro Pump on Naomi. The plus two. 
134 special attack. I Wait, still me? think he'll do the. No, I it was 124, not 134. I was gonna say I didn't think anybody had high enough uh, special attack for for one C. No. Uh, Etika does, but the other two don't. Uh, the Etika, Etika no, Etika is 124 attack. No, he is 134. I actually have. Oh, 134. Yeah, Etika yeah, had the best special attack of the three. Okay. Headstrong got good uh, black belt spinner right after the juggler there. And time for everybody's favorite trainer, Skip Alexa. I'm not hearing any enthusiasm from anybody else. <laughs> I, 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 you mean the trainer that I drifted directly into in my second moon race? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's fun. Everybody loves her. She's not the hardest, Skip. She's the most nerve-wracking skip. Yeah. Especially if you're on a PB pace and you get... You uh -huh. catch her and your PB is just down the toilet right there. Clean. Oh, headstrong. Smooth. Clean through. Smooth. That was clean. All right, let's see Sandy here. Going to 1C Naomi. Sandy is 1C Naomi. Unless okay. they forgot to summon, which is possible. Nope. Oh no! Nope, they they called it. it. They called it in when they uh, pushed the boulder. Is my guess. Oh okay. <laughs> That's usually where I'll call mine in as well when I go to push that boulder because I'm stopped anyways. Sometimes if the rappel runs out, like rappel runs out right before Naomi, you can summon there. But yeah, Good call. Okay, gets the range. That's definitely a range. And the hydro kills and the jinx. So I mean, Headstrong did not get Carolined today. At 151, that's 126. 126. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna be surprised if we see Lapras strat for uh for Lance for Headstrong, just to guarantee that range on the uh Dragonite. We're definitely gonna see a plus six on Lorelei. Yeah, I don't even think she's 75% on the Larpus with that uh, special uh, attack. No, she isn't. She's 8 of 16 right now. Yeah. Okay, and again, again for... one seeing Naomi, as I, as I suspected. Yeah, this is probably Skull turn 1. Nope. Going bold. Skull turn got a hit. One C's. Does it? Got it. Gets got the it. One Let's C. go. Let's go. Gets it to. That's so good. That is that is huge. That puts all the pressure on Sandy right now. And Headstrong has done showing that she can push a block 20 times. <laughs> oh, and Edda should be in range that he could probably go risk it for two or for uh, plus two or plus four, I mean, on uh, on Lorelei. Depending on how uh, how frisky he's feeling. Yeah, he could do. He should. He should have uh, maybe like a fourteen or fifteen and sixteen on the Lapras, and then he'd have to pump yeah. the Jinx. Pump the Jinx, yeah. We'll see what his uh, special attack here is on level up, but he had one thirty four at fifty. He did get the uh, range on the hip now. Expecting plus six for Sandy and for Headstrong. Yeah. But the fact the fact that Etiquette had the catch route that he did 
and had everything that could go wrong for him in this run pretty much go wrong for him to only be not even a minute behind Sandy at this point. Yeah, this is definitely a high 300, low 301 pace run. <laughs> Sandy killing the rappel <laughs> before the Alexa skip. Not a bad strat. Yeah, I, I don't remember in my last race where that rappel ran out, but it, must it have usually been runs out like right around that. Uh, yeah. Spin around, or for me, usually it's after Caroline, but with the super boat, super rappel. But with suit, well, with super repel and with him flying to uh, Pallet Town instead of oh, true. Viridian, That's that kind of threw things off. The Caroline for him too. is a range with hydro pump. Oh, gets misses the, miss. the hydro. That's not good. Misses okay. oh, the hydro and gets put no. to sleep. Not like this. No. Okay, this is kind of scary now. He's they're probably gonna 2C, looks like it. Yep. Hey, Etic getting by me etiquette getting by Alexa. I'm about to start up Caroline. And strong starting up Lorelei. And Etta so making sure to talk to the front of Caroline instead of behind her to initiate the Colby fight. Okay, so Sandy going plus four scald on the Jinx. Uh, Sandy is gonna have to heal, but luckily the rapid dash is out, so they'll be able to do that in battle rather than outside of battle. But we'll see how Etta gets Caroline goes here. Okay. There's a put to sleep. Put to sleep. Misses oh, no. Missed. Pump two. Okay, Picks. there we and go. Yeah. Good. That's guaranteed. So Etiquette is literally two pokes behind Sandy right now. Etiquette is going to what, HP yeah. 136 right now. 136. So they Etiquette's are a 14 of 16 on the Lapras at plus four. Yep. Uh, Etiquette's going to have to heal after the battle for uh, Dawson. Yep. Yeah, because the... Uh... The Power Whip probably wouldn't kill Etiquette, but the Aqua Jet from Blastoise would. Sandy's, 22 uh... seconds separate Sandy and Etiquette right now. Oh no, we lost Sandy feed, it looks like. It's okay, they're just pushing Boulder. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, we almost we lost, lost Etiquette, etiquette for a second too. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Etiquette's ahead, but um, Sandy's feed is just behind, I believe. Yep. So. yep. Etta is actually about 22 seconds back. Oh, oh okay, now, okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. We, sh we should be all caught up now. Etta just might bring this back. Don't call it a comeback. Uh, yeah, Edda just... still does need to do a heal, so that will cost him about five seconds here. Oh, he's just not healing, go right just there. going. Did I miss a heal? Well, he could get Power Witness, so he could just opt to heal on the Blastoise in that case. I don't believe Power Whip Good. heals from here. Uh, I don't think so, no. Power Whip shouldn't kill. What's the HP? Uh, 85? 65. 65? Power Whip does at max 64 on a... 11 HP after the Power Whip. Yeah, they're fine. He might be safe for Blastoise's Aqua Jet, too. Yeah, I don't know what his defense is. Blastoise Aqua Jet does at min on a high roll 12. At min? Okay. At most on a high roll. Either. Well, at most, yeah. Yeah, at, yeah, most, at most on a high roll 12. So he could just be risking this range. Yep. He didn't even event. get the Aqua Jet. He could have just had really good defense. To be fair, I don't actually know. We'll see what the defense is. Did, did Sandy grab the full restore? Does anybody know? I missed no. that. I'm not even aware of Neither did I. Either. did not either. Okay. 15 seconds behind. 
I mean, that's 15 seconds that we can see. It might actually be closer than that because, again, we did have about an eight second difference at the very beginning of we the did. run from uh, etiquette delayed uh, feed. And that's not even including his reset for the, the, back, for the, the neutral EV. Sandy's going to be menuing here. Looks like. Okay, Larpus is coming Sandy in. He is adding Larpus. So Sandy is fully planning on safe strats through here. Etiquette is going 1C. I and think is Etta realizes least he for... needs to. So he yeah. needs. He needs Power of Love on Agatha, then. He doesn't have a full restore. Unless he's planning on just he two He might just two Agatha. see that one, but then just go... But taking the taking your party member out and then bringing it back in seems slow. I don't know. I, I feel like the way to do it would be put in your 2C for that for Agatha and Lance, and then swap the 2C out when you go to heal before champ. Yeah, if I had to bet, he's just gonna hope for he's hoping for power of love here. He's not gonna bring in that second mod. I mean, his special attack's good enough. He can go for for plus four sa uh, for the most part safely. He is yeah. going for plus four. Yep. He just needs to hit a uh, hit that eighty percent hydro pump on the junks, and he should be good. And he has a range on flappers too. Yeah. It's a fourteen Which is and sixteen. What, 14, 16? Yeah. Which he does hit. Got Good. the range. Sandy and might he gets the range with the, hi, gets hit, hydro, hydro pump. hit. Nice. That's Sandy now he. Uh, <laughs> Sandy does need to keep an eye on his HP after uh, the EQ no. from. Oh no, he'll get Stealth Rock. He was mixing uh, 48. Rock, yeah. yeah, he'll get Stealth Rock anyways because he's got two mons in his party. It doesn't matter. It's like, at max, it's 48. It does. It won't kill. Oh, we got some got some sync. So we are here. we are synced up right now. As Headstrong is going into Dragonite. Um, did do we know what Mon Headstrong has as her two C? Hedgehog has Larpus. Okay, so she is going to go for the uh, Ice Shard, is my guess. Yeah, okay, Etiquette actually a touch ahead here. Earthquake for Etta, Stealth Rock for Sandy. Earthquake, I guess, is a bit slower than Stealth Rock, so now they're about even again. This is so close. <laughs> Edda was about a minute and a half, two minutes behind and came back. Etiquette was dead to the max roll of Aqua Jet, by the way. Yep. Mm hmm. Had like 101, 102 defense. And it does have the turnarounds. No. No, no, he doesn't. No, no, he doesn't. Sandy does? Okay. Oh, oh Sandy yeah. does have turnarounds Sandy already. Does have turnaround, yep. Sandy went plus four on Caroline. Because of that unfortunate situation, the did plus four scald. There's the two C. Wait, hang on. That's the hyper potion. No, Does not, not bring in two C. Just going. Oh, we're hoping for power of love or a turn one crunch. So a lot here. Uh, 
hanging in the balance for etiquette. Meanwhile, Sandy is just going straight to C. Headstrong is about to start up champ. I know we've been kind of ignoring her, but she's uh, just flying ahead here. Okay, para, there's the flying. para. Speed. Oh no. Okay, so that has to, that is in a heal loop here until he gets power of love. There it is. There, there power it is. of love. There we go. Gets it turn three and is fine. Okay, that's not the that's not the best, but it's uh, it's good enough. He's he's one thirty six special attack, right? Yes. Uh something like that, yeah. So he'll probably he should be one thirty eight, one thirty nine for the Dragonite, so he should be looking at like a fourteen out of sixteen, fifteen out of sixteen range. We'll see Depending roughly. Strong is got Mega Pidgeot on our screen, the only Mega that we see in this run. We are running E4 Ooh, round two. Then Larpus does die. Everything. All right, let's see. She's fine here because even a crit would not have killed. And there's a plus four. Headstrong is cleanly through. GGS. Very good, very good champ for Headstrong. Headstrong's not cleanly through yet. Her special attack is low enough that Marowak might be a range with Psychic. She could just, she could just call it that, though. Yeah. Okay, so Etiquette finishing. I got the first, but Etiquette will have to menu here. Use the Max Elixir as well as the Hyper Potion on Starmie. Um, Sandy's going straight in. But yes, yeah, Etiquette is still slightly ahead. Entering lands. By two seconds. <laughs> Two seconds. I mean, this this is the kind of race that I was hoping that we would get, where it's just wild. Like, <laughs> a, a a a razor's edge for <laughs> no pun intended for <laughs> these these racers. <laughs> To where one small misstep, miscue, could be could be the difference between first and third. All right, I think it has two more turns of setup here. Okay. GG's headstrong. That is three. This is a three oh one. Okay. Etiquette's through. Got the yep. Got the hyper beam miss. If hyper beam hit, then it had it could have healed there and not had to heal outside of battle, but he'll take this. And this is definitely faster than the 2C. Yep, Headstrong is looking at a low 302 for her uh, final time here, which is... Uh, no, she's 301. I 301? She is 301. Even with Lapras? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It's uh, not a PB, but it is absolutely 301. Uh, it has 145 special attack, so he is more than good. Yep. At 145? On champ. He's guaranteed a plus 4 psychic. Plus 2 T-Bolt is a 10 and 16 range. Yep. And he got the crit on the Dragonite, not that it mattered. All right, great job, uh, Headstrong with a high 301. Only about 30 seconds off PB, so... 12 very, very, seconds very, very separate Edda and Sandy right now. Edda is on his way in. It is he going is into 2C here. Oh, he's bringing in the Pikachu. <laughs> he's bringing Pikachu to die. <laughs> It's it's a, it was a fast grab. I'll give him that because it's right. It's the first thing he caught. That that level four. He realizes that he's he now. 
so hard to catch. He's going. Pika's, in, Pika's going in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Can't say that about Eevee. This is nearly synced. <laughs> we should have had strong in here shortly. Right, yes. Hello. GG. GG. Congrats on the win. Thank you. It was a very good run. We were. We, we were, were all in for BB hallway. there. That was so close. It was very close, and it doesn't help the fact that I hit the trainer early on. Mm hmm. I, for oh, I forgot yeah. you hit that optional early on. <laughs> Yeah. Without that optional, that is a that is absolutely a PB. Would have been is... close. It was a pretty quick optional, so it was just a tackle. Sure. Well, it quick attacked me, but or a better star would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> better star definitely would have been nice. You you, you all kind of got hosed on the star and outside of you know etiquette special attack, but his speed is not good. <laughs> and my no. speed was good enough and my special attack was just garbage for everything. I couldn't do anything at all. Etiquette is now Oh, they've ta they've traded places. Sandy has now taken the lead. Oh, this was really close. I gotta go pull that up. I haven't had the stream up. <laughs> they have they've been neck and neck for like the last what, ten minutes since uh the juggler? It's the pump for, for Sandy. Needed to pump Jolty on there. The special attack was not good enough for the psychic. Etiquette grabbing that Pikachu might have might be the difference. I mean, yeah, it, Edited sort of about eight more. seconds late, late. So I'm not sure if they are in sync. That was a uh, like 50 50 psychic at plus four for Sandy, so definitely worth it to pump. Yeah, so you can go to plus four on uh, Pika, but you have to pump the Jolteon. Unless you have Godly Special Attack. Yeah, well, well, the, well that's actually, probably what we'll have to do are the, are is. The, are, are the poke orders different? Yeah, the poke orders are different. The extra level? Yeah, oh. the extra level might have done it. <laughs> oh, and oh, because that early candy for Sandy. That early candy for oh Sandy. My. Oh my! <laughs> no way! They might have to retime this. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> they they this really is... might. Both both of these guys have been dealing with uh, some feed issues throughout the run, so we're not sure exactly where they <laughs> are. Yeah, first that, is, turn. that is true. <laughs> So it did, they it did look like Edis stopped like started like seven eight seconds back, yeah, and took his backup. Yep. Yeah. So we'll watch you, the next uh, time. This was uh, this was I think the the race that we all were hoping this would be you know a nice close race between the three of you something that was entertaining start to finish we have a 30601 for etiquette in race time and sandy will be finishing just after uh did sandy, sandy. Hit? there goes uh, sandy have, uh 30609 for sandy well i have a 17 in yeah, uh, I see 17. race time oh, okay. okay so edit one by about 16 seconds but yeah we we might have some 30605 for okay so okay. sandy with a 30605 so four seconds <laughs> four seconds we'll, 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 yeah we'll probably retime re that's so close <laughs> ggs ggs hello ggs etiquette gg etiquette that is one hell of a comeback <laughs> we were worried that bring <laughs> that force was something <laughs> else <laughs> so i Assuming the sync on stream was good, which I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, who knows. Um, I knew Sandy was getting the extra level, mm -hmm. um, and I was pretty sure I was far enough ahead that it didn't matter, um, especially because I saw the Lapras had full health, or not full, but close to full health. So I did not expect the Lapras to go down, um, and when it did, and they were ahead, I was like, this is fine because they still have the level up. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, because I I noticed they I <laughs> I pulled ahead on Lorelei. 
Yes. And I was like, that yes. makes no sense. And it was because they leveled up on Lorelei and then I leveled up on Bruno. So I knew they were a fight ahead. And I knew that you were like close to a level up in normal experience route. Caroline was um, actually the real decider. Yeah, absolutely. Caroline, Caroline, uh, Caroline decided was... another one for our races. Car <laughs> Caroline <laughs> decided another race for you three. Yes. Yeah. yeah this time it was Sandy that got the, uh, got the bad luck on, uh, on Caroline. Yeah, it, it was, uh, it was almost Sophia that kicked me out of this race, but uh, that's a whole other story. The the game, Gosh. the game does like I deserved a little bit of good luck at the end there, considering what the game threw at me for the first hour and a half. Sure, God, dude, like no Weedle line at yeah, all. I was going to say I have yeah. no Weedle line, but I do have a ditto if anyone wants that, <laughs> <laughs> which was complete. I, I still I was a double Pokeball ditto, no less. Weedle. But that that catch count is something else. I I got to fifty. That's what mattered. <laughs> I literally was, after I hit fifty, I closed it. So I don't even know what my catch tracker looks like right now. I was so mad. I was just like, I'm it done. Was, nope. It was a catch tracker of all time. That's uh, I'll, <laughs> that's for sure. That, that was nuts. Yeah, that was that was wild. Second, <laughs> so three unrunnables in a row. Mm -hmm. Uh. And that was the second race in a row I resorted to no full restore, but still one controller ring, the Elite Four. So, uh, it, I mean, you managed the one C on Naomi. Yep, I was guaranteed there, so I I was like, I was pretty sure I was just gonna go for it anyways. But when I saw I had like one thirty four, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. I, yeah. I had one thirty four After... when I finished. <laughs> yeah, so after Blaine, you were about a minute 22 behind. Yeah. Uh, my speed, I believe, was lower than my special attack. I got yes. air slashed on rival five and didn't get flinched. <laughs> yeah, your uh, your your speed we knew was... you weren't going to have speed. You, that speed was rough. <laughs> of the three of you, you had the best special attack and the worst speed. Yeah, oh, yeah, th this was my this was easily my best star of the tournament, too. <laughs> CP wise and stat wise. I was going to say, yours was the highest CP, too, at 10... What was it, 1034? Uh, 1042. <laughs> 1042, yeah. 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 At 10 Sandy's 34. was 1030. Okay. We had 1034, 1039, and 1042. It was... It was... It was one of the most entertaining races, I think, that we've gotten this tournament so far. This you is know, definitely I'm, really good. I'm glad it was fun to watch. It was not fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was very much not fun to do. I agree with this. <laughs> GG, Sandy. Dude, I, that at the end. I flew to Pallet Town instead of Viridian, yes. and that yes. was the entire... That was the race right there. Like, I knew that mistake was going to cost me the whole thing. Like, yeah. second place. The, it was a combination, I think, of that and then Caroline. going in with 2C. Like, after after Caroline, going in 2C, I think, was the decider between you and, you and Etiquette, just because... Etiquette. No, no, it wasn't the... two C. It wasn't two C. It was two C. Doesn't I, lose. It was like candied time. wrongly. I thought I was going to be cute and candy early and get scald ranges on Koga, and I didn't get that. So I ended up with Bruno turnarounds, and that is also the decider of eight yeah. seconds. So like the the two C isn't an issue at all. Like two C went perfectly and actually saved time over the run I did last night by like thirteen seconds. Oh, the three. But yeah, so. Like, 2C is not the issue. It was just I did a bunch of other things that messed up and lost me, like, two minutes overall in that game. Yep. Yep. I had a very fun and weird Eevee section. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Adam and Eevee. <laughs> and, uh, that Chansey was huge. You needed that Chansey on six. That Chansey was massive. Chansey, Chansey saved a lot, and then I had a super-sized Graveler... And, you did. Uh, in Rock Tunnel. And then my catches and were just kind of weird, generally, because everything I could still catch later, but I just mm -hmm. had, like, no catches. <laughs> but Sandy I knew had I could a Wumbo Chansey in Moon. Yeah, I I hit my mic on both throws. Oh. On, <laughs> so, like, I barely didn't get excellent on both of them, and then it was fine, but like, yeah, there was just a lot of small things throughout this run that I just am not happy with. Yep. And, and also, I'm on four points now after round three, so I'm out of the tournament, basically. 
<sighs> but yeah, it was fun. I'm gonna have to go rewatch it because yeah, I didn't turn on the stream until that was, Archer. That was a really good. That was a fantastic race. Etta getting the Meowth and Venno on 25 was huge. Yeah. I, I almost <laughs> had a start on the catch count. I'm like, that was needed. I almost had a 10 Pokemon exit moon time. Uh, yeah, split. I almost were, uh, yeah. I almost had 12, but then an Onyx split. <laughs> yeah, Onyx like, was helpful. I, I was going to Neither you were great it. on catches. Sandy was ahead on catches the entire time. Yeah. yeah, and I kept on getting like hit by things I just caught. So like I ran into I think four things mm -hmm. after Sophia in tunnel. <laughs> I, yeah. I was gonna ask you, Etiquette, because you had that rare char next to the slowpoke trainer. Yeah. Um <laughs> at that point I was like My you catch count is fine because I got I got everything on Route 10. I got Krabby. Um the only thing I didn't get that I wanted was like Radicate. But like I could just get a catch, catch eradicate anywhere, so I was like, I'm fine. I've got 50 planned without tentacle, and then no Machop spawned, no Ghastly spawned, um, and so I was in a world of hurt after that. Mm -hmm. um, but like, hindsight would have been better to go for it. Yeah, but I think so. It would have would have avoided Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> but we hindsight got ditto. is 50 50. We, we I got, got ditto, ditto on a know? double Pokeball. Nice. <laughs> it was a it was a twenty two percent chance to catch. By the way, I was I was so mad because like my first it was a ultra great with a Raz and it was an excellent yes. and it didn't get in and I was like all right I'm just gonna keep throwing Pokeballs until this thing runs away from me and so I threw one I think I missed the circle and so it broke out and then I hit the second that one thing and of run away that would have been GG's and you probably would have DNF oh, yeah. right there. Yeah, I even yeah. said in the chat after I think it was like around Blaine I was like I'm gonna yeah. go play this till Archer and then. Um, I have another yeah, tournament race at nine, so that's why I was yeah. like, I'm just gonna go eat and then. <laughs> but yeah, I was. Yeah, I wanted like, to ask we you on knew, that. we knew at that point you were rather far behind Sandy, and yeah, yeah. you still had pokes to Evo. Sandy didn't. Yeah, I was. I was like, has Sandy pre-marked? Like, I'm like, how are you at 48 right now? The answer is time? Magmar. And then the other thing is, I didn't see. Uh, Sandy did what I should have done, which is go to Erica first and then do Vermilion Shop. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't see that they went there first, so I saw they had like a 208 Erica with 48 Pokemon. <laughs> I'm like, what pace is this right now? <laughs> no, yeah, uh, I, I committed to that last night. I went and made splits, like did a run yeah. with a 305 run with Vermilion Shop just so I'd have stuff to compare against. That's wrong. Nice. What was your lane? Like 200? My Blaine was two flat twenty five with forty five Pokemon. You were yeah. flying. Yeah, I was thirty seconds behind my PB coming out of Blaine, and well, I finished thirty two seconds behind PB. So, I mean, you're not thirty two, twenty eight seconds. With that you bad a star, you only lost two seconds from Blaine. Yeah, my PB doesn't have a good ending. I have a six-turn archer in my PB. Uh, yeah, you did get a four-turn archer, and then you only had a single protect on Koga. I have, yeah, well, it was toxic protect well, on no. Koga. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, it was toxic protect So you on lost Koga. one turn there. You lost one turn on Caden, because protect and, on Beedrill. And I did the late elixir because of my bad special attack. Yep. I elixired after Caden. Mm, yeah. I actually delay elixir, generally speaking, until the fly menu. I had, <laughs> After I had five psychics going in. If I if I go yeah, in no, the you, had, had you didn't psychics. have enough psychics. You didn't I, have much of a choice. I did something I like to do in races. It actually worked beautifully this run. Um, I elixired on the menu where I healed after Giovanni. <laughs> Works. I noticed. Yeah, I. Uh, it was just one of those things, like, I was set up in a good position for it. I, I, in races, I don't like elixiring before Koga's Gym, in general. Mm -hmm. And I had eight moves, and so I was like, I've got exactly enough. Um, I think it's fine when you have the special to be able to, like, scald yeah. pretty much the entire gym. Yeah, like, when you, like, when if, you if can you're, scald if it, you're, you're fine. Safe. Yeah, if you're safe to just scald things, and ha then doing the elixir normal is fine. But yeah. then, if you've got terrible <laughs> special, then best to delay it. I did get double protected on the B drill, but that's a fun every, one. 
mostly everything else was okay. I don't think the Golbat or Muck protected. No, it didn't. You got both you and Sandy got protect on the Benno, but nobody really got trolled at all really in that gym too much. And nobody had like nobody had T bolt from Archer, which is really nice. Yeah, I had a perfect start, and then Cuba missed like two bone meringues or one or two. <laughs> oh. So it's like went from that like a three turn. Did not help at all. It went from like a three turn to like a six turn. It was really oh frustrating. no. Cuba really, I got really lucky because the sucker punch hit the Cuba on one of the turns. Otherwise, I would have had to heal. Yeah, and you got yeah. the four turn because of it. Mm-hmm. I got I got a four turn as well. Cubone did what they needed to do for the three turn, uh, but Weezing protected. So. Uh. But yeah, GG, that was... That was a fantastic I race. gotta watch the ending, because yeah. that was really, really close. <laughs> it was wild. I also... GG's to all three of you guys. I would like you to know that the range for that plus four Hydro Pump is not on my notes. It was not a good range on <laughs> Jolteon. And it hit. So, just believe in your Pokemon, believe in your friends, let them guide you to finishing runs, everybody. <laughs> I, I yes. don't know if the two, if the other two kn knew or not, but I, I hit a... What was his name? Ben? <laughs> Is that the, the trainer that I hit? Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, that Spiro trainer <laughs> just outside of Pallet, or uh, outside of Pewter. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I, j I thought I was going to make it fine, and then he turned and caught me, and I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> Sandy did hit the Route 6. Yeah, that's the first time I've missed that since uh, coming back and playing. I, I don't think I've ever hit that spinner. <laughs> Yeah, let's, I guess the uh, Rio one is nuts. Yeah, we the got best uh, I had being back. That's a anybody right now has to be scared when they come across that drunk because, like, quite frankly, well, okay, let's be honest, anybody would be scared facing any of these three. Oh, definitely. I mean. Because all you know, three got, of them could pull 301s, 302s. Oh, definitely, definitely. And we've got some some great runs coming up here soon. We we've got we've got Mocha Jones, uh, JLF, and Burner uh, coming up on the uh, coming up tomorrow at two thirty Eastern time. And don't sleep on Mocha. Mocha had a just above three ten pace earlier that died. I was gonna say Mocha's Mocha's been improving greatly jlf has also been improving greatly um and burner as well i mean they're i think for newer runners i think they're three of three of the top newer runners that we've got in the community mm -hmm. right now so definitely worth a watch tomorrow on saturday we have a double feature we've got razor Actually, friday or sorry friday we've got a double feature on friday we got razor durams and sheep uh, that's going to be a fantastic race. And then we have in the 430 slot, uh, Jay Tattles, Leggy Starstream, and Alwo. Another uh, another run, another race with a newer runner that is really improved vastly over the uh, the few weeks of this tournament. We've had so many new runners this tournament that have just gone wildly cool. Right, like last year's tournament, you know, there was a, there was a kind of a gap between like the the people that have been running a while and those that were new. And this year, there's not that gap, and I think it's no. making for better races overall. We've had a lot of newer runners that have been here for less than a month, and have are pulling three hundred fours, three hundred fives, three hundred sixes. It's wild. So, but yeah, that's, uh, thanks for hanging out with us here today. You guys have anything else you want to say before we, before we wrap up? Don't catch Ditto with double Pokeball. <laughs> or oh. do. Don't run into <laughs> Or do. Or do. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to raid you guys on out. And uh, thank you again to our uh, amazing racers today. Thank you to Sai for being our tech person today. And uh, thank you again to Iron and Razor for commentating with me today. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the great race, folks. Uh, GG's to everybody, and we'll see you all next time.